Mr. Chair, we are live on YouTube, so you can start whenever you'd like. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We also ask that you mute your devices until you are called up to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be upgraded to panelist when your item is being held. During that time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time and at all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and video and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the Committee on a particular application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address as the Committee of Adjustment and in the event of an appeal, the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the Committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies, as those times are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out in the bottom at the bottom of the decision of the committee. So the hearing procedure is as follows. We uh, go in the order listed of the agenda uh, after first dealing with uh, referral matters, matters that uh, we were for this afternoon we're gonna be looking at. And then we go back to the top of the agenda to item 21 and we start hearing the applications in order. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with the presentation if desired. Where the committee does not require presentation, Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and then take the committee and the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And the clock is shown up on the board and we advised and uh, when you're reaching or you've reached the five minute mark and I'm asked to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please start off by clearly stating your name and address. And please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent on a contested matter, contested meaning there's someone here in opposition to speak to the matter or in support for that matter. The applicant or agent goes first, makes their presentation to the committee. Please note the committee may not entertain revisions made to our proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that those all those 
entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentations. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the speakers. That will then mark the end of the discussion on the matter and the application is then taken into the committee for a decision. Uh, are there any declarations of interest of panels or staff with respect to any of the matters before us in this, uh, this afternoon's time slot? Okay, none to declare. Uh, deferral requests. I note in my review, there are three items on the overall consolidated planning memo indicating deferral, deferred items or matters that should be raised uh, for possibly being deferred. And those are 22, 27, and 28. We also have a request, uh, item number 39. It's a TRCA request for a deferral until such time as the uh, development uh, limits can be established. Madam Secretary Treasurer, should we deal that one at the outset as well? There's also a urban forestry uh, refusal uh, on that and, and, trans and TRCA is asking for a deferral. Oh, we uh, can. Excuse me? We can. Yeah, we can. You're, you're trailing off. I couldn't hear you. We can deal with it. Okay, I, you can deal. So I guess we'll deal with that as a deferral. I couldn't hear what you said. You're trailing off part of the end. Okay, so the first uh, matter, I guess, to deal with then on the matter of deferrals is item number 22, 15 to 21 Milford Avenue. And that is an application to uh, construct a one story addition along the rear side of the existing buildings at 17 and 21 Milford Avenue. There are two variances. And planning is asking, um, uh, I believe there's an email. Okay, this is planning was asking for a refusal of variance one, um, but there's also a um, email dated January the 19th. <laughs> from the applicant asking for a deferral or actually talking about there was an error uh, made, they, they claim. So the matter has to be deferred. Uh, the speaker for the application is Alan Ramsey. Mr. Ramsey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, My name so is Alan Ramsey. I'm the, the planner working on the file for the applicant. And okay. through our zoning review, it was determined that the zoning re review identified the wrong zoning bylaw and therefore the variances that were subject to the public notice were incorrect. And I understand that staff have agreed to recirculate the application for a future meeting date. Okay, fair enough. Members, any questions for Mr. Ramsey? Oh, it looks like the yeah, planning, it looks like just had a uh, conditions of approval on this. But uh, I guess it now has to be deferred. So any any questions or can I have a motion to defer? Mr. Taylor, I can see you, so your hands up. Yes, sir, Mr. Shaw, I'll move deferral to enable uh, correction to the notice. Okay, thank you. Second for that. And just oh, to clarify, you. was this an error from by the city? Can the applicant answer that? Yeah. I think that's what I remember reading. That yes, this was the, the, error uh, the city made. Yes, the the uh, staff provided a zoning a zoning review notice, and it cited the wrong bylaw and the wrong sections. Okay, and that's what the application was based on. Okay, all right. So I will second that motion for deferral. Thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, we'll see you back here again, Mr. Ramsey. Be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item on the roll uh, list, that is, is uh, item number 2721 Lorraine uh, Crescent or Lorraine Gardens. Okay, and it's an application to uh, construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage with four variances, but we do have that uh, for reasons on the consolidated memorial um, two and four. 
Um, the old fat urban forestry looking for a refusal. Um, the speaker on this application, uh, we have two, uh, is Carol Jim, the agent for the applicant as well. We have a neighbor present uh, to make submissions from next door. Uh, so community planning has this listed as items two and four. The staff can, I just don't have it in front of the reasons for uh, the deferral and two and four. And we'll find out if uh, the agent is in favor of the renewal, uh, the deferral request by staff. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. My name is Carol Jin. I'm the principal architect of Jin Architect, and I'm representing my clients of uh, the owner of uh, 21 Lorraine Garden. The reason we're asking for refer deferral is uh, uh, I have been working with a community planner to address some of the issues that they have, and we have a revised the uh, drawings uh, yesterday. Finally, we submitted an updated drawings to uh, modify the design already. So that's why we, we like to ask for deferral to be put on the agenda, next uh, agenda on February 23rd. Okay, thank you. Um, and I just looked up the consolidated memo item number two on the deferral is to order to provide adequate time for staff to appropriately review the application, discuss any concerns. Etc. And item number four is in order for a revised public notice to be issued to address revisions to the proposal. And uh, so, having said that, let's move over just to touch base with the neighbor who's on the line. I assume um, that the neighbor is on the line. I'm here. Okay. Yes, so I'm here. Linda Redan at 23 right next door. You're here to discuss the merits, but it's like they're going to be making changes. And there will be a re notification. So we will not be uh, dealing with this matter on the merits today. Okay. Uh, so, I... you know, whatever. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. So, can I state the two issues that I have, or should I wait until February to discuss it? Yeah, you can wait until it's back on those issues may be uh, no longer applicable based on the changes. And if certainly if they are, you will be re-notified as the next door neighbor within the notification uh, area, clearly, uh, when this matter is brought back on and you'll have that opportunity should you still have those concerns at that time. No, I'll definitely have one of the concerns because um, okay. of the property Good. line that we have, we've got cedars all throughout and the cedars are on okay. our property but the gentleman Wait, has already cut we're just we're not oh. discussing this on the merits today okay. so there's no point you letting me know at this point uh okay. we did go you know, the letter's not from you but we you will have a chance to express your views when the matter is considered on the merits it'll be actually before a different panel or uh, different members uh the members uh change so there's no point really uh mentioning your concern at this point uh because it is being deferred and uh, it will be brought back on. And just to clarify for both the agent and the neighbor present today, um, I don't know that this will be scheduled for February. Right now we are scheduling for March. So the applicant will have to reach out to the application technician and they will confirm a new hearing date. I just don't want people to think it's February. Thanks for clarifying. So there, they wouldn't. So uh, you'll have your chance, I guess, uh, when this matter is brought back on, whatever that may be, and you will be notified. Okay, thank you. Um, and members, any questions for either the applicant or the neighbor, or can we uh, have a motion to defer, please? Well, move to defer so that the applicant um, can uh, bring the revised plans back. Okay, thank you. Seconder for Mr. Kamarik's motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor? The uh, yes, the application is deferred. We'll see you back here another time. Okay, the next one is the very next application, item number 28, 466 Prince Edward Drive. And um, that's, we have a number of people scheduled in addition to Mr. Dome, the applicant's agent. We have three area residents or neighbors uh, scheduled to speak on this matter to the merits. Again, this is on the uh, consolidated planning memo in order for, to be a request from planning to defer in order to provide adequate time for staff to appropriately review the application, discuss any concerns, 
uh, obtain potential changes, et cetera, and from the applicant. And um, so the speaker or the applicant's agent is Joe Dome. We also have three area residents uh, registered on this matter. So, Mr. Dome, uh, are, you, are you aware of this? Uh, oh, first of all, let me just, yeah, I might as well. Um, we do have revised plans before us, as shown on the screen. There were 10 variances that are now. Uh, the length variance has also been revised. We have um, an arborist report and revisions to that. Transportation has no concerns. TRCA has no objections. There are six letters of, uh, of uh, opposition. And the question for the agent is, do you wish to proceed? Um, uh, or these do these revisions satisfy? And have you been advised that these revisions will satisfy uh, staff or not? Um, we, we really would like the opportunity to uh, present today. Um, we, um, we have had conversations uh, with planning and that necessitated um, the revisions. And, um, you know, while we do appreciate the comments uh, by the neighbors, um, and, you know, we understand that in many cases, it's not always possible to uh, agree on the reasonableness of a proposal, but feel that in context, um, uh, we would really like to uh, proceed and we feel that uh, um, that while planning's uh, concern, I believe, regarding length uh, was not fully addressed, we tried to get as close as we could. Okay, so you can get into that if we're going to decide to hear this on the merits. Um, typically, I guess, if the applicant wishes to do so, and we do have three people on the line, right, really, uh, and they do see that, I don't know, the changes on the board, and they, uh, whether the members feel that that's uh, appropriate or not. Uh, members, any any comment? The applicant would like to proceed. Uh, do you agree that and we then we obviously would have to hear from the neighbors. The neighbors obviously want, are here to discuss on the merits. So I guess let's discuss that. If we're going to proceed, we can proceed and not have to listen to the you know the neighbors really uh, would like to proceed. They're on the line ready to proceed. So Mr. Dome has not been able to tell us that. Uh, I assume, Mr. Dome, that you cannot tell us that absolutely these are the changes that planning wanted, uh, et cetera, because they did put down D2, which I read out the purpose of that for. Yeah, um, so they had concerns about the uh, the first floor height, which we um, spoke about with them, and they were okay with it after uh, the explanation. Um, they had concerns about the um, the balcony floor area, and that's been removed. In the um, um, in the revision and and as well as the length and so we tried to reduce that uh, um, by one meter and uh, that was really I, I would like the opportunity to explain uh, further in the okay, presentation. So I, so I appreciate that and you're you're you know a, a regular uh, experienced agent appears before us often so you, you can't definitively tell me yes exactly they wanted A B and C I did A B and C but yeah I, I tried to like um, that the brand. Right, yeah. but you would like to proceed. You don't want to have a, a month or, or longer, as you just heard Madam Secretary say, we're looking and looking into March, uh, that you would like to proceed with this application. That's right. Okay, okay. members, uh, we've heard the applicant's position. I don't think we have to listen to the neighbors. Do you agree that he should be permitted to proceed? In which case, can someone bring a motion to that effect? Mr. Taylor, what say you? We, oh, I, I will move that we proceed with considering this application today. Okay, so you believe that uh, that is reasonable for us to do so in light of the applicant's position. Okay, thank you. Could I have a seconder for that motion? Mr. Palmer, thank you. All in favor? Uh, opposed or? In I, I did saw the hands went up slowly, so I don't know what that means. Is everyone uh, okay with that? Or is I'm that opposed? Uh, I, I'd like to get some clarity from planning, and therefore okay. I think it's appropriate to defer. Okay, so the motion carries four to one. Matter, I will proceed. Uh, so we'll put it back in the hopper when we get to it. So I guess there's just one more item, um, Barb. I couldn't hear you when I was asking whether we can deal with it rather than have these people stay on the line. Oh, actually, I see. It's at the three o'clock agenda, my bad. 
we have a three o'clock agenda today, so we cannot deal with that matter anyway, because technically it's not due yet. Agreed, Barb? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, because that's uh, we have a three o'clock agenda. I'm gonna have to read the speech again, I guess, for two people. But um, okay, so that concludes the deferral matters. So we can go back to the top of the agenda, item number 21, 407 Rexdale Boulevard. Let me just get there. Uh, it's an application to construct a new seven-story hotel, Building B, and a one-story restaurant, Micro Distillery, Building A. Uh, we have two variances. There are previous decisions on this property, September 22, 2011. Uh, don't know if it was built, construct a new six-story hotel. September, we'll hear from the agent. September 2016, a one-story hotel. There's a, we have a covering letter, two uh, photographs, a traffic impact study, and an applicant's presentation. We have um, ECS uh, comments, uh, planning email dated December 8th. Um, saying that they won't be providing comments at this time, that was in December, and I guess we still don't have any, and transportation says they have no concern. So having made that introduction, uh, let's go back and see who the speaker is here. Oh, the speaker is Chris Langley, uh, as well as we have um, someone else registered to speak an operational manager at the recreation center nearby. Okay, so we have the second speaker and we have some materials. So uh, Mr. Langley, um, can you take over on this please? Absolutely, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee and Christopher Langley from Tory Planning and Management for 407 Rexdale. Um, I have a presentation to give if uh, the chair is able to put it up on the screen. Uh, if not, I can just run through uh, the merits of our application. Just wait for it to be go up on the screen, please. No problem at all. There we go. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So the site is located on the south side of Rexdale Boulevard, east of Highway 27, and immediately west of the Hydro Corridor. The neighborhood consists primarily of employment, industrial, and highway commercial uses. Uh, due to its proximity to Pearson Airport. A stable residential uh, subdivision is located north of Rexdale Boulevard as seen in this photo. Next slide, please. So the subject site currently consists of a vacant single story structure that's accessed through a shared private driveway from Rexdale Boulevard. The parking lot of the site is currently being used for commercial vehicle storage. Uh, in response to the chair's earlier comments, no construction has occurred on site to date. Next slide, please. So as stated by the chair, the proposed redevelopment of the subject lands is to accommodate a seven story hotel and restaurant with a micro distillery and eatery and has been in the process for several years. Uh, the site plan application was submitted in 2017 and notice of approval conditions were received in April 2022. Uh, a building permit application is also currently under review with the City of Toronto. It uh, should be noted that since the time of this application, the owner has received site plan approval from community planning for the proposed development, and this occurred in December of 2022. Uh, next slide, please. This is the approved site plan. Uh, the restaurant with the micro distillery is located on the northwest corner of the site with the seven story hotel located at the rear of the site. Service parking to facilitate both uses makes up the majority of the property, which is due to the overhead wires that occupy the east side of the site. Next slide, please. So the variances requested today, uh, which were identified by both community planning and zoning through our building permit review, is to allow a type one or to allow for a one type B and zero type C loading space where the bylaw requires one type B and one type C loading space for the hotel use, and to allow a maximum floor space index of 1.17, where the site currently permits a maximum floor space index of 1.0. Next slide, please. So regarding the loading space variance, a shared loading strategy has been developed through the site plan process and in consultation with City of Toronto's Transportation Services and Community Planning Division. The hotel use requires one type B and one type C loading space to support the building as per the zoning bylaw. No loading spaces are required for the restaurant. However, deliveries are anticipated to support it. 
The proposed site plan therefore locates a type B loading space on the east side of the hotel and a type C loading space on the east side of the restaurant. And this is shown by the red arrows on the, on the plan that you see. The shared loading for strategy is facilitated by a single condominium corporation, which is contemplated as a condition of site plan approval. It's accepted by both community planning and transportation services, as noted in the site plan application memo from engineering and construction services that we included within the application. And I also note that transportation services has commented that they are in acceptance with this strategy as part of this variance application. The deficiency was determined again through building permit review, and it's our understanding that the variance request is a bit of a technical amendment to allow for the built form. Next slide, please. The floor space index increase is respect to the top floor of the building as the original approval included two story rooms located on the sixth floor. The current proposal splits the sixth floor into two one story levels, so a new sixth and a new seventh floor, thereby increasing the gross floor area of the building from 5,345 square meters to 6,218 square meters, as the voids from the two story units are essentially filled in. It should be noted that the approved height of the proposed development will remain the same as the new seventh floor is within the current approved building massing. We've attempted to show this division in the slide with the dash red line. Since the time that the building was originally designed, it's projected the projected demand for two story suites on a, both a short term and a long term basis has diminished. And this is partially due to the lasting impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide, please. So the application for the City of Toronto Community of Adjustment seeks approval of the minor variances to permit the construction of the hotel and the restaurant. The application is evaluated examining the four tests of a minor variance as set out by the Planning Act. Specifically for the increased FSI, the hotel use and design have been previously approved for, through formal Planning Act processes. The height, the massing, and the character of the building will remain unchanged from the previous approvals, with the change only occurring within the interior of the building. The FSI for the hotel and restaurant are combined to make up 1.17 FSI. The restaurant use is compatible with the hotel and will serve their surrounding employment uses in addition to the hotel guests. Together, the uses will complement the existing employment area with the buildings carefully designed to improve the public realm in this neighborhood. It's our opinion that this requested variance for the FSI is minor in nature. The development proposal also requires the number of loading spaces on site to be consistent with the zoning bylaw. However, it contemplates sharing these spaces for both buildings in an effort to improve site functionality and site circulation. The location of the type C loading space on the east side of the standalone restaurant is on the same side of the hotel and functioning under one condominium corporation. It's intended to facilitate deliveries to, for both the hotel and the restaurant. The Type C loading space has been sited within close proximity to the main entrance of the hotel and it's expected that major deliveries will be scheduled by the hotel through the condominium corporation, prioritizing of course the Type B loading space to support the hotel use. Should the delivery overlap, the Type C loading space located adjacent to the restaurant and within the same condominium can be utilized. Since the hotel use is expected to have both access for both Type C and Type B loading spaces, the proposed variance for Type C can be considered minor in nature. Thank you, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, sir, for that. Yeah, I see when I wasn't able to see the clock. In any event, this is an important application, and I think it was important that you proceed with your. Um, My apologies. So, uh, so I basically, a transportation agrees. I had set out in the outset that they're okay with this. Uh, they have no concerns with respect to the loading space variance. Uh, we do have another speaker. First of all, can we um, on the line, which we'll get to. In the interim, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Langley based on his presentation? Okay, so we have Martin McDonald on the line. Welcome, sir. Yes, good morning. How are we doing today? Good. Uh, can you explain your interest? It says your address is 105 Queen's Plate Drive, Unit 1. Can you explain your interest in this application? Certainly, Michael. We are we back on to, if you look at the application, we back on to the hotel. We are the white building, which we also share the common area driveway that the hotel is backed onto. Okay, so I see, um, I'm have the, the location map that we get circulated see uh, on, the, on my screen. Uh, you're the property sort of just to the, uh, to the west of that. Correct. So we have two tenants, we are, we occupy uh, the building, there's three other tenants in the building. <laughs> the entrance to the rear of the building occupies the front of our building to the, our tenants. 
so okay so so what's and what's the use of these the, the uh, your so you're the operations manager that is for correct. the tenants or for the owner of the building for the owner of the building okay and you have three tenants in there that is correct okay and so what is your what's your or you have concerns with the application or actually just just reviewing the application and reviewing it uh, forehand and so forth it's they seem the amendments are, are fine I, there's, there's no issues on my part so um i've discussed it with christopher and what the adjacent that he's he's adjusted i don't have any problems with it i'm fine with it so okay you have you have christopher's uh, contact information you're in touch or whatever and uh hopefully you'll have a good neighbor and uh a place to go for uh, the, the distillery. Exactly. Uh, I guess it's an amenity, not just for the hotel, but for the you know, people in the general vicinity and the uh, city at large. Uh, correct. Just uh, it definitely builds the area up quite quite nice. So it's a, okay. It's so a you have no, just to clarify, you you have no objection for uh, for Chris to uh, respond to on the record here this afternoon. No, I've just been cleared up in regards to uh, our discussions and the uh, the amendments. Not a problem. Okay, thank you, sir. Have a wonderful afternoon. Excellent, Michael. Thank you for your time. Okay, okay no one else had any questions for Mr. McDonald? I assume he's still there. Yes. Um, okay, so uh, Chris, I guess nothing really to uh, to reply to, but if you want to just respond. Uh, yes, I, I spoke to Mr. McDonald prior to the meeting, reached out to him uh, as he had a couple concerns with the driveway. And I think we have resolved the issues. And of course, our line is open if any further uh, conversation is need to be had. Okay, very good. Good to be a good neighbor. Um, members, any questions for Mr. Langley or someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Uh, just a comment. Engineering Construction Services had a number of conditions, uh, but the memo was written in 2021. That's the last I remember seeing it. I don't think they wrote it. They, I don't think they've written a new one. Uh, through does, that still apply, does that still apply is my guess. No, my question. that is a memo to community planning related, I think, to the site plan application. It's just in the file for information, okay. but it's not for this application. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, good question. Um, any other questions? There's not someone ready to weigh in. Mr. Kamarik? If there's no further questions, um, I find the application to meet the four tests and to be desirable and would like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Thank you. Second for Mr. Kamarik. Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Langley. Thank you, Mr. Martin. McDonald. Mr. Thank you all for your time. Okay, thank you. Look forward to seeing that hotel come up. Um, so we can move on to item number 23, uh, 62 Blue Springs Road. Uh, it's an application to construct a two-story east side addition. There are five variances. We have uh, planning is asking for a condition of approval. We have previous decision uh, for June 3rd, 2021 for a one-story east side addition. Question is was it whether that was built, I guess, possibly. I don't know. With that. I note the planner, the, the agent at the time was Mr. Bora. So uh, this, the speaker for this application is Manuel Pacheco, Pacheco, and he's the owner of the property listed. Yes, he's the owner of the property. Welcome, sir. Mr. Chair, Mr. members, we, they are present. Good afternoon. Yeah. How are you, Mr. Clark? Mr. Chair, one moment while we have, we sort out the technical issues. Uh, the age, the property owner has logged in twice, uh, and as such, we'll have feedback problems. So I'm just trying to figure out which one's the best one to use, and we'll we'll kick out the other the other um, the other login. Manuel, go ahead. Yes. Yes. I had to put the second application for the property covered. Mr. Chair, we fixed the technical uh, sound issue, so we should be good to go now. Okay. 
Yes. Okay, well, because when I apply the first one, it was uh, on the shack I make, I got the permit for that. It was not included with, on, um, on the drawings. And then when I submit the drawings the second time, so it was a, have an issue because of the property covered. That's why I have to appeal for the second time. Okay, so the re reason you're, you're here is that you're applying for, compared to what you applied for previously, June 3rd, 2021 and got approval. Yes. For, it's different. You it didn't have all the variances and you're building a little extra here too. No, because when it's you submit the, the, the drawings to the examiner, the examiner don't accept it because it says it was over coverage. Okay. Because I had the shack already made, but it was not in drawings when it submitted to the community adjustment, but that shack is in a new survey when we went to the community adjustment. I think it was, he, he saw that and it would be approved, but then with the examiner, examined the, my drawings, it don't accept because it's over covered. And I keep fighting it's, someone last year to do it, then they keep reducing, reducing me, and they got to what I want to do so small, then he told me I have to apply it as a second time for the community adjustment, and that's what I did. Okay, so I see it is different anyway. This time you're looking for a two story. Last time it was a one story. So yes. just wanted to clarify. So that wasn't built. You never proceeded with that. And you're here now for what you're here for. Uh, there's no one else appearing. Um, members, do you have any questions for Mr. Pacheco? Uh, or is someone ready for a motion? There is no one else here uh, on this on this matter. There is the the uh, the planning condition. Actually, Mr. Pacheco, uh, you're aware that the planning has a condition of approval on this? Yeah, the, 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 the condition? Yeah, that it's to be built as illustrated on the site plan as it relates to the east side yard setback. Yeah, the, the first one I was going to do the addition to the back, but that I'm not going to do that anymore. So I do on the side, on the east side, and I decide to do the second floor over that. Yes, but I'm saying when if we the committee approves it, you have to build it just in accordance with your plans. Yes. That's all they're asking for. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, members, any other for questions for Mr. Pacheco or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor. Yes, sir. thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm satisfied the variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act and I move approval subject to the community planning condition. Okay, thank you. I have a second for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Palmer, thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval, sir. Okay, go okay. ahead. After the appeal period, you're, you can, well, yeah, you can, I assume, go ahead. Um, next application is item number 24, 56 Harlow Crescent. And this is an application for a new detached dwelling with an uh, attached garage. Uh, there are four variances. We have uh, noted some rev revised plans, but I, I note that the variances haven't changed. We don't have anything highlighted. Um, we also have a revised location map, but to me, it looks exactly the same. Uh, we have a cover letter and we have a opposition letter from 45 Royal Gardens Boulevard. Oh, they're the owner of the next door house next door at 58. So we have an objection from the house next door at 58. And planning is requesting refusal of the application. For the applicant, Faisal Ahmed. And as well, we have the neighbor at uh, the next door neighbor uh, representing 58 uh, Harlow Crescent on who wrote the letter yes. on the line as well. Mr. Chair and members, I'd like to bring to your attention due to uh... Well, the agent not pre-registering, we had to make some quick phone calls and we can confirm that uh, the actual agent speaking in the file will be uh, Karina Jayani. Uh, so I'll go ahead and unmute them now. With that being said, they've also logged in twice. So we might get a bit of feedback problem again. So if we do, I'll deal with okay, that. You have, you have the spelling of their name and the contact information that's required because I couldn't obviously make this with you. Yes, spell. Mr. Chair, we do. Okay. Okay, so this is the, the eight the different agents speaking on behalf. Yes, go ahead, Karina. Okay. Hi, can I give a presentation? Uh, yeah, can you give me your name first? Uh, Chris Karina Jayani. 
Yeah, you have to state your name and address for the record before you make uh, submissions. So your address it's is? Carlo. Okay, so you, okay, I just gave the introduction. We have a cover letter. Uh, we have revisions to the plans, but not highlighted to show any changes to the variances. And we have a negative planning report as well as the letter from the next door neighbor who's on the line as well. Yeah. So please proceed. Okay, so previously we applied for a hearing with zoning notice with three variances in total. That was lot coverage, FSI, and main wall height. Later, we realized that there uh, we have one more variance uh, site setback, which was missed by the examiner, and we didn't have enough time to get the revised zoning notice. So we sent the zoning waiver and highlighted the variances in public notice. But after that, uh, we got the comments from city planning staff to reduce the FSI. But the owner of uh, 56 Harlow requested more space because of developing disability of his son. The owner have the family of six members and he need bigger room, washroom, elevator and uh, living space on the second floor for his son to move around. Uh, but in respect to city planning staff, we reduced the FSI for, uh, from 0.72 to 0.69 and uh, reduced the lot coverage from 35.7 percentage to 33.52 percentage. We were continuously in touch with community planning staff and reduced these variances. Later, because of uh, we added one more variance, that is a uh, site setback. Uh, the neighbor, uh, that is 58 Harlow, and city planning had a concern about that also. So we propose, uh, also the proposed setback was actually the same as current exi existing house. Uh, but still the owner took our fort efforts and uh, he talked to the neighbor about all the changes and they again uh, decided to reduce the variances. So we increased the side uh, setback from 1.22 to 1.5 meter. By doing that, we ended up in eliminating one more variance and uh, that is lot coverage and reduce the FSI from 0.69 to 0.68. So now we have three total variances. Uh, that is FSI 0 0.68, uh, 0 0.68 time lot area, site setback 1.5 meter and main wall height 7 meter. Um, so I would like to request uh, uh, committee members to please take everything into consideration and please approve the requested variances. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So just to clarify, yeah, we do have a revised notice. It is different than the original notice. Um, however, it's not highlighted to show the changes. So it, it shows that the first one was at 0.7 uh, coverage, I believe, 7.71, um, and then at the new one, it's 0.69. But normally that would all be highlighted for us to show that you've made a revision to it. For some reason, we don't, I don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, you, other members, you're, you agree, you don't have the, it's not highlighted. Uh, Planning uh, is, I just want to clarify when I see these, the planning's concern was before or after you made the changes um, or they're, they still feel that you, or, or they, they're looking at the old variances. So they're looking at, no, they have the new one at 0.69. So the planning report is based on after you've made the changes. So planning still believes, ma'am, that it's an overbuild situation, right? So. I just wanted to clarify that because when we we have changes and then we have a report, a question is whether the report respond oh. the changes responded to the report, but they still have concerns. Um, and having said that, I just want to know if you finish your presentation, we have to hear from the neighbor as well. After we see if committee members have any questions for you. So, are you finished your presentation? Yes, but uh, you noted, right? Like we also eliminated again a uh, lot coverage and uh, FSI. Now we are having 0. 0.677. I see 0. 0.69. Yeah, but uh, I, as I told that uh, we already had a uh, conversation with uh, community uh, planning yes. uh, yesterday only. And uh, because of uh, the neighbor uh, had uh, objections, so we eliminated the variance uh, of lot coverage. And again, we uh, revise the FS. If you made these revisions yesterday, we would Before not you. be aware yeah. of them. Yeah, we still show a slight lot coverage of 0.52% over the, point, the 33%. We still show the 0.69. You're saying you brought that with 6.9 to what? 2.68. 6 what so is that in? Yeah, that, that first of all, ma'am, is not before us. We don't have that. We yeah. still have the hops off. So what's before us is 
what's shown on this and have it up on the screen. I don't I have it on my screen. It's what's before us in the planning report that recommends refusal. So perhaps just to be clear, that's what the city was refusing. So you're telling us you've made some small minor changes to eliminate the lot coverage variance and you brought down the 0 0.69 to 0 0.68, but we don't have that. And, and that would only be if how many how many meters less is 0 0.01. So the 383.95, it goes down to what? It goes to 377.29 meters square. So basically six meters less. Yeah, but- uh, Six meters less. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, I just want to point that out because what's before us is what's before us. We don't have this, the further minor changes you made, but- the question is whether those would be that the members have to decide is whether those few there's further little changes changes their mind that community planning would have been happy. I don't know if that's the case. The changes yeah. seem pretty minor compared to what community planning commented. I on. I understand, but uh, okay. Yes, I just wanted to clarify. The community members may agree with you. Let's we're gonna we're gonna hear about that after we hear from the neighbor. But I just want to clarify that these further small changes are what they are. Okay, so let's hear, does anyone so have any Chair, questions? Before, before we go to the neighbor, if I may ask one more question? Yes, please go ahead. Um, my understanding is that she is now proposing to eliminate variance one as well, is that correct? Yes, yes. yes. And we are also reducing the site setback from 1.22 to 1.5. We are increasing that setback. Okay. So. So, so that's good to clarify. There are three changes she's made from what's before us and what was before the, the planning department. But it's yeah. it's not before us. If you make the change yesterday, how could you think that that material is before the committee? And as Madam Secretary Treasurer has told you, that's not before the committee. So any other questions right at this point for the agent before we move on? Mr. Taylor. Just by confirmation, there's no changes to variance four. Soffit Height, from the agent, please. Uh, sorry, what? I'd like to know if you're also proposing a change to variance four. No. Okay. Sorry, uh, Palmer question. Does reduction in the side yard, where is that on the site plan? Which, which side, the left or right side of the building? I, it's a really busy site plan, and I can't even tell where the original variance is, to be honest. That's important because that's I see it reading the, the neighbor we're going to hear from his concern was about the, the uh, reduction from the 1.8. So 1.5 is better than 1.22. Okay. We'll, we'll hear from him and whether he thinks that's. Uh, yeah, if we can get clarity on that, though, that would that would be helpful. That's why, like we said in the speech, changes on the fly are not accepted. This side, that side. Okay. I mean, sorry, I, I, I don't see which side you're you're referring to. It's uh beside fifty eight uh, Harlow. Beside fifty eight Harlow. Okay. Yeah, it's the one where the the east side the one lot space line. is fifty eight. The one on variance three. So and, and we have the neighbor at fifty eight. Oh, okay, I, I think I speak. understand. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the neighbor is about to speak, and we'll start off by telling him that it's not really before us, but uh, the the architect has advised that she's changed the one point two two to one point five, whereas one point eight is permitted is required rather. I mean, okay. Given all the changes, the applicant may want to. Think about it doing a, a deferral. Yeah, well, they don't have the plans before us, but um, we have the neighbor uh, about to make submissions. So let's hear from the neighbor. Is on the line. Is uh, Tony Del Vasto on the line? Uh, yes, I am. Welcome. So can you hear get your letter up on the board you. while you're speaking? Well, okay. Yeah, I was primarily concerned with the side yard setback, um, primarily because of the size of the house, the amount of floor space index that's being requested. 
Uh, so I just wanted to make sure the house didn't feel like it was on top of the other house, a 58 Harlow, because 58 Harlow is a, a single story dwelling. Now I, I see that they've requested that it, they go from 1.22 meters to 1.5, which I'm willing to concede on. But one of the things I went back and forth with the, the homeowner uh, yesterday or the day before via text, and he did assure me that they would not be putting air conditioning units on the east side. So I'm, I'm prepared to withdraw my objection if it st stays with 1.5 meters and there's no air conditioning units. Now, I don't know if I could make that request, but I'm making it. Yeah, Barb, that's a good question. Can we can we make as a condition of approval on the deficiency that it's 1.5, not 1.22, but 1.5, and that there be no, I don't know, I guess not just projections, but no mechanical equipment placed on the east side of the property? Is that something we can make a the, condition? The setback would depend if you're accepting the revisions today without the plans. In terms of the air conditioning unit, there are regulations for those, so you can't put a restriction on no AC unit on that side if it is permitted there. Okay. Ms. Del Basso, you're, you're, you're hearing that? Yes, I am. So, and that, the sector I'm guessing that, is telling us that, we can make that a condition. Well, I so guess I'm good. going to take the land. I'm going to take the homeowner's word for it that he's not going to do it. I, I want to trust that uh, he's an honorable person. And so I'm prepared to withdraw my objection. Okay, thank you. Uh, so that gets us back to the other problem of how do we proceed today to make approval at 1.5? Barb, is that without having plans before us? It showed the 1.5. That's a concession from the neighbor at one, where 1 1.8 is required. Barb, can you please weigh in? Or do I mean, we... it's up to the committee if they want to consider all the revisions the applicant has suggested before, where they've eliminated variance one, modified number two, and modified number three. Okay, so I'll open it up to the committee members to consider that together with if they have any remaining questions for anyone or if they want to make a motion. How's that? Mr. Kamaris? Just a comment um, at this point. You know, we've gone to 0.68, and as you've uh, described, Mr. Chair, it's a fairly minor adjustment. And uh, we have no way of knowing whether that would have satisfied planning or not. Uh, and I believe that was their sole concern, was uh, the FSI being too high. So I, I don't think we really have clarity on that yet. True. Um, so, you know, aside from that, whether I guess uh, reading the rationale for that, whether uh, they did mention this could be achieved by reducing or eliminating variances for lot coverage, which they did, FSI and side yard to decreasing the massing. So they didn't. They say the side yard of 1.22, whereas 18.8 is, which is permitted and means required, is not minor in nature and further impacts the scale. So the question is, again, is community planning, Mr. Kamarik, would they be happy at 1.5 compared to the 1.8? So we are being asked to read between the lines. We're making, I guess, the members make their own determination as to whether something is uh, is minor or not. I mean, personally, I don't have an issue with the side yard setback. My concern is does 0.68 set a precedent for FSI that's unreasonable in that area? And I have no way of making that determination without the context from planning. Yeah, they don't, they don't provide any numbers. He doesn't provide any numbers. He does, mean, but that's, he's at 6.69 and he's, you know, whether he'd be satisfied with six meters, six square meters less at 0.68. Uh, the question is again, and the age the the agent hasn't shown us, uh, you know, uh, a, a map of the street showing lots of other houses or new builds at those numbers. We have no way of knowing, right? Because no one's given us that information. 
Looking at Street View, July 2022, looks like they're in the near vicinity. If there are no new builds, they're all older ranch style bungalows. Okay, so small, um, two, uh, small two story, but you know, there's doesn't look doesn't appear to be any new builds. We need to, uh, you know, the applicant is unfortunately complicated by coming in and making, you know, in, a, in the spirit of cooperation, and she says satisfied the neighbor to make changes, but unfortunately, they're at the last minute. Mm -hmm. You know, given that we've had six weeks in between hearings, this is like normally it's a much faster. You know, I'm not faulting the for making further changes. It's just the timing of those changes. Yeah, there is. It does appear to be one new build at the corner. It's a corner lot, however. Yeah. So, anyway, um, okay, members, just waiting for a for a uh, either any commentary or a motion. I'm prepared to make a motion. Um, I think notwithstanding the revisions made before us, I don't think there's been really any justification from a planning point of view as to why these variances are minor and desirable. Uh, we've got other people who appear before us who give us uh, examples of other, especially when it's FSI, other examples in the neighborhood. And I don't see that here. Shaving off, you know, 1% uh, may be big, may be small. I just don't know. Um, it's really hard to tell. So I'm going to recommend refusal on the basis that it's not desirable and not appropriate and doesn't meet the intent uh, of the zoning bylaw. Okay, thank you, sir. A seconder for that motion. Mr. Kumara, any commentary? Um, just that I don't think the change is substantive enough to have um, moved um, and I, I believe the appropriate action here would have been for the applicant to do deferral, but since they chose not to, it's at their peril. Okay, so we have a move, a second there, all in favor for refusal of the application. Looks like it's unanimous, the application is refused. You know, it's unfortunate the applicant had been able to show us, which may be because they don't exist, a whole bunch of precedents, especially on the GFA. The other ones are hard to tell what it is when it's length and depth and height, it may only be for a parapet or Portion, but FSI GFA is pretty easy. So the fact that they weren't showing us at 0.68 is maybe because they don't exist. And uh, we would be making a huge mistake by making a precedent that could be significantly over what the uh, typical build form is. So the application has been refused, unfortunately. Um, and we'll move on uh, to the next uh, application, which is item number 25. 134 Government Road. Uh, this is to convert a portion of the third story attic into livable space. There is one variance, the FSI. And uh, the speaker on this application is Addison Milne Price. Mr. Chair, members, uh, uh, Addison asked uh, early on to have their camera on, but during the microphone check confirmed that they do not need it on at this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and unmute them and will not bump them over okay. to a panelist side. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Addison Milne Price of Design Plan Services at 900 the East Mall, Suite 300, Toronto. Okay, so you only have one of the one variance on this. Uh, you have your supporting materials. We'll put that on the board uh, and a Metrolinx uh, advisory comment on this. Um, very straightforward. We don't have much before us. So we have, uh, you have some materials here. Basically just, that's two pictures. It's the uh, existing, especially the second picture. Very good uh, depiction of what you're doing here. Just filling in the attic space, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And not the entire attic space either. Okay, so no change from the exterior. So um, members, any questions for Mr. Uh, Milne Price? Or is someone ready for a motion? No one has any questions. I'm ready for a motion. Um, this is a very straightforward application and, and desirable in, in uh, my opinion. Meets the four tests and move for approval uh, with no conditions. Okay, seconded for that. Mr. Kamarik, thank you. All in favor? 
Okay, I don't see a visual on Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor, assume you're you're okay with that? We're just going to mark him absent. Maybe he's lost okay. the connectivity. Okay. So the motion carries. You have your approval. Thank you. I'm the agent okay. on the next, so I'll see you then. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we just clarify for the previous application, item 2456 Harlow, the motion to refuse and the ultimate decision, was that based on the original application or with the modifications? Uh, that's the mover of the motion. Uh, well, Neil? I see on the application before us, because that's the site plan that yeah. we had with this okay. as well. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank the you. Point six, the point six nine, um, still with the coverage. Yeah, so what's yeah. in the package? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, the next application is item number 25. And I just threw away my sheet. We just did 25. We're it's now 25. on 26. 26. Okay, so it's 30 Sir William Lane. It's for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage with six variances. We have urban forestry looking for condition two or five, which is the one looking for a refusal. Um, yeah, I had a question on this. Let me just get it up. It says variance number one, 26% is less than 28 permitted, including, why do I have that note? Is there an issue on that? Let's see. Yeah, we only have comments from forestry. That's the only uh, commenting body. Twenty six. So Ali Malek Zadeh is the agent. Ali uh, Malek Zadeh. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. I'm a little confused here, sir. Can you just hang on a second? This is. I said there are six variances, and I had a note last night when I was reviewing this. Yeah, the maximum is 0.28, and you'll have a gross floor area that's less than that. So why is that a variance? Sir, I think you have to look at the entire uh, variance requested. It's the lesser of 465 or 0.28, which is 568. So really, it's it's the first part of that that they need the variance on, the 465. Oh, okay. okay, so I'm reading this. I read this wrong last night. Yeah, but they are, I, 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 okay. Why are number one and number two the same? Yeah, that was the other. Yeah, but it's, but it's and on, on first glance, it looks like it's less. The proposed dwelling will have a gross floor area of 528.36 and a floor space index of 0.26. Uh, are they under different section numbers? No, it's the exact same thing. Variance is one and two. Um, so just hang on, Mr. Malek uh, Zadeh. Uh, Barb, can you weigh in here? Yep, I'm just going to look it up. I think I yeah. had a similar question, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's, it's, they're exact, they quote the same section number exactly. They're the same, but they're also. So the, the difference is what a variance. In vari a variance one does not include the is the lesser of words in front of 465 meters squared. Oh, the lesser of. Right? See what I mean? The lesser so of, okay. The numbers in terms of the total GFA are the same, but Mr. Taylor's correct where the one section does reference the lesser of, and the one. One of the difference. one of yeah. the provisions is under appeal, so that's why they had to state both, even though they look the same. Okay. A bit confusing, but yes, it's just it's there's a twenty fifteen. Uh, you know, if in order to accommodate this, uh, the purpose of the application, I always look at it. We're here to approve applications, not variances. This application, in order to build this new detached dwelling with an attached garage, if the members feel it's worthy of acceptance, that this is what they need. That's the way I always look at it. If there's something wonky in there and they need it, they need it. The committee's job is to figure out if this house is worthy of 
Uh, and having said that, we have nothing from planning, we have nothing from the neighbors. So let's hear from the agent. So Mr. Chair, uh, the, there is a planner uh, on, on this application as well, but- uh, First of all, can you, can you introduce yourself first, just formally for the record, Ali? My name is Ali Malik Sadeh, and uh, my address is uh, 236 Les Mill Road in Toronto. I am the architect of the project and uh, the applicant, um, but recently uh, the planner was also added to the application and uh, he actually uh, present the, uh, the previous application number 25, Addison, and uh, they actually representing the application. I don't know if we can switch it. Okay, so yeah, I, I, can I, I heard him say that. I, I heard uh, Addison say that, but then I saw that you're the agent. So do we have Addison on the line? And Addison could do the presentation is what you're telling me. Hello, uh, Mr. Chair. Can I just Sorry ask for... in the future that if someone's going to speak as an agent, if they can register in advance so that we don't have these problems in the future. Thank you. Uh, hello, Mr. Chair. My apologies for the confusion. I had okay. registered for uh, this hearing. Um, Although the the applicant uh, himself also registered, uh, I did not know that uh, prior to registering. Okay, so had John for twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, you've heard you've heard the discussion. I take it between uh, us raising the issue of what does variances one and two mean? Why are they both there? Why does it appear on the face of it? I guess it's a little technical. The lesser of wording, which I didn't catch last night. Um, Yes. And can you explain that? And I would like, I just said, I don't, to me, if the application is worthy of consent, other people are the experts on the zoning review, then we approve it. But it would be good to get some insight from you into what this is all about. Uh, absolutely. So, Member Taylor and the uh, staff assisting you were essentially correct. Uh, the bylaws section referenced in variance number two is a slight change in wording that remove that adds in the lesser of uh, wording. Uh, that's a difference between the bylaws section reference and variance one. But as staff said, since the bylaws section reference and variance uh, one is under appeal, both variances are re required. Okay, so uh, go ahead. So this is, uh, I don't think we need a fulsome presentation on the merits. This is a detached house. You have variances. Doesn't seem like anyone's uh, too concerned with that. What? Oh yeah, urban forestry is. You got variances two and five. But are they looking for a refusal of variance one and variance number three, both as they will require the detrimental injury or removal of a healthy bylaw protected tree one, two, and three, and the permanent loss of viable planting space. So what do you say about that? Uh, and the question is, is it the, the build itself or just the mountain variant variance that is causing the damage to these trees or potential injury? Uh, so the, uh, an as of right dwelling would have the exact same effect. Uh, with regard to the city trees that the report references, uh, there are no changes proposed to the driveway. Uh, so the, the planting area will not change. And uh, with regard to the uh, one private tree that was referenced. Uh, the side yard setback proposed um, is currently 2.4 meters. Uh, that's the variance that was referenced in the forestry report as well. However, since the side yard setbacks that are required here increase from a base of 2.4 meters based on the height of the proposed dwelling, uh, the wall of an as of right dwelling could be located in the exact same location as the proposed dwelling. Okay, so as we've been told in our uh, seminars and training from urban forestry, they're only supposed to be objecting if the incremental amount, the variance amount, is what's causing the damage to the trees. Having said that, are these going to be efforts made to save these trees? I can see we have looking at the report, they look like, you know, they're pretty substantial looking trees. We have the forestry memo up on the board that a city owned Nor Norway spruce, you know, someone's to come here and we're looking at a, a sapling that's like an inch diameter. Uh, but these actually look like real trees. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
although there is no uh, arborist report, the intention is to uh, retain every tree. Okay, uh, members, um, any questions um, for Mr. Nolan Price or is someone ready to make a motion? I'm prepared to make a motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, but I believe the application meets the four tests and I'm prepared to move approval subject to forestry conditions one and two. Okay. Which I believe forestry was requesting those as the alternate to the refusal. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, seconder for that motion. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? Okay. That unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Milne Price. We'll see you again. Okay. Item 27 was deferred. And 28 is the one where we're going to proceed. That was on the um, planning memo. So that's our next application. Um, okay. So item number 28, 466 Prince Edward Drive North. And just do a little introduction. We do have revision page on this, uh, revised page showing changes made. Uh, to the uh, application. Um, first of all, we have in the additional materials, urban forestry, we have uh, presentation materials and an opposition letter. Urban forestry is looking for conditions one and two. The revision, they were 10 variances for this. Uh, it's basically also, it's a two-story rear addition, a new front yard porch, a new rear deck, balcony, a new rear yard covered deck and a new detached garage. Uh, there were 10, there are now eight variances and one, the length has been revised. Uh, we had the planning memo on looking for a deferral. Transportation has no objection. TRCA has no objection. Transportation, no concerns, rather. Uh, six letters of opposition. And um, that's basically what we have. So let's hear from Mr. Dome. We do have three other speakers registered to speak. Uh, we didn't speak to them on the matter of the deferral. Uh, so we will deal with those three, it provided Adam confirms they're all still on the line. Adam? Mr. Mr. Chair, members, all three area residents are present on the call at this time. And it should be noted, two of the three do wish to appear on, by video, so we'll make sure we have them on that. Okay, and in the order listed on my attendance sheet, we'll hear from 84 Queen Anne Road first, Sandra Brazel, then from uh, Derek Rond at 464 Prince Edward right next door. And on the other side, 468, Chris Tyman. So um, we'll, we'll be hearing from them in due course. So Mr. Dome, the floor is over to you to make a presentation. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the owners. Um, the owners would like to build a, a two-story home in accordance with their family needs, um, which they would like to be able to accommodate multi-generational livability. Um, while working within both the existing lot with constraints, uh, while also retaining a, a significant portion of main walls through the um, uh, walls of the existing basement and main floor. And though because it's less than 50%, it needs to be um, considered a uh, new dwelling. Um, given that it is a narrow lot with an existing driveway that is maintained, in order to accommodate what the owners need for their family, their only option is to increase the length while trying to mitigate impact by being within the bylaw for um, overall height, main wall height, lot coverage and floor space index. Uh, we have had those the uh, in-depth discussions with planning uh, where they had an issue with the original length variance and the rear second story balcony area. Uh, they were also concerned about the length necessitating the removal of the rear tree. Resulting from these discussions, the owners have tried to do their best to improve and revise the proposal um, and would like to amend the variances. The length and depth of the dwelling have been reduced by one meter and the whole rear covered deck and second story balcony above have been entirely removed as shown on the submitted revised drawings. We feel that these changes really improve the application and reduce impact to the rear of the dwelling and would also allow for the preservation of the large uh, rear tree number seven. We uh, submitted the revised arborist report in conjunction with the revised drawings and urban forestry has no issues um, as you mentioned um, and as also shown on the consolidated uh, recommendations. Therefore, we would like to amend the public notice to remove 
variances four and six and reduce variance three from 22.08 meters to 21 meters. Uh, we would also like to amend the purpose Hold of that. Hold on a yeah. second. Hold mm -hmm. on a second. We have the revised one up on the board. Are you telling me you want to make further changes to this? Uh, <clears throat> no, only changes to the description, the uh, purpose of the application, because the um, rear yard balcony and the and the rear yard covered uh, deck are oh, removed. Okay, okay. So just out of the purpose of the application, a new rear. There's no longer a new rear yard balcony and the new rear yard covered deck. So That's the right. Rear should be stricken. I thought you were making further changes to your variance and your length. Your length. Uh, I see. Uh, no. Yeah, but it's, it's what's before us is what's before us. But yes, let's remove that from the purpose of the application. That's right. Um, so there are now eight so, variances. So basically, as you continue, I just I want to hear from you in this regard. Uh, planning, obviously, you were on the memo. We didn't hear have a planning report on the merits. It just said we want condition two, which is to make changes, consult. Have have those changes been? You're not telling us then that these changes are to the satisfaction of planning, and in fact that they're not. Or what's the position on that? On these that these you eliminated two variances, you reduced the length by a meter. Can you tell us that that satisfied planning? Um, I, unfortunately, I don't know uh, whether it fully satisfied okay. planning. I, as far as the length goes, I know as far as the other variances go, it satisfies planning. Yeah, you said their concern was with the length, and, and interesting, you, you don't have. I was when I looked through this, you don't have an FSI GFA variance. That's right. Or a coverage variance, so you know, so that's an yeah. interesting point. Um, okay, so sorry for interrupting. I just wanted you to incorporate the fact yeah. that you don't have a planning report because they were asking for a deferral, and you want to go ahead. Uh, yes. So, um, uh, so to address uh, variance number one and number seven, um, <clears throat> which are referring to the front yard setback and the front covered porch, uh, the front yard setback is very similar to the existing setback, but there are bump outs for the windows. In fact, the existing front porch and sloped roof extends further and is much larger and, and wider than the proposed uh, smaller front porch, as you can see on the uh, overlay on the site plan. Um, so, in context, the proposed overall um, uh, the proposal overall improves on the existing front yard conditions as it relates to the uh, front yard setback and view from the street, and requires no uh, soft landscaping variances. Uh, furthermore, a quick look at the setbacks of many dwellings to the north show the uh, vast discrepancy of um, front yard setbacks, and we feel that this one um, is quite reasonable. Uh, num variance number two, the proposed side yard setback on the north side, applies to the rear corner of the dwelling. Uh, which is due to the continuation of the line of the existing retained main walls as it goes to the rear. Uh, toward the front of the dwelling, the existing 0 0.56 meter side setback is maintained. This is mitigated by the fact that there is a very large space between this setback and the neighboring dwelling. And furthermore, the south side is uh, set back much farther than the bylaw to accommodate the existing driveway. Uh, there are also many houses along the street, including newer builds that are at a similar setback to the lot line including the direct neighbor on the south side at uh, 464. And a lot of these other dwellings um, are situated right up against each other as opposed to allowing for the amount of space on both sides um, as the proposed dwelling. Uh, variance number three refers to the amended building length of 21 meters. As I've referenced uh, earlier, the owners had to work within the constraints of the lot and the um, existing dwelling. They feel that the revised uh, design helps to mitigate impact combined with the fact that the overall dwelling height is 0 0.81 meters below the bylaw and the side main walls are also significantly smaller than the bylaw. Uh, the revised dwelling is also 10.4% under the bylaw for lot coverage and 50 square meters under the allowable floor area. I'd like to mention that along the west side of uh, Prince Edward Drive are many large dwellings which extend much farther back than their neighbors. Um, looking at the overhead views of uh, 468 and 470 uh, in relation to each other, as well as uh, nine um, houses north on the same side, 510, 512, 514, um, 516, and 518, all of these dwellings have very large discrepancies in their position as they pertain to their neighbors' rear walls. Um, in the case of 512, it is a full two-story build that is a similar length to what is proposed. Um, variances 4 
and six have been uh, eliminated. Variance five refers to the main floor height. Um, there was no way around this as the owners had an agreement with the previous owners to preserve the basement foundation walls and, and doing an underpinning was risky. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, the dwelling does, um, as I mentioned, meet the overall height and main wall height bylaws. Uh, variances eight and 10 of the bylaw are, are mainly due to existing conditions. Um, and as far as the, the driveway is concerned, uh, transportation has no um, issues. Uh, overall, we feel that uh, the revised proposal in context uh, with existing conditions addresses planning and neighbor concerns as best as we could and um, is reasonable and minor in nature. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Dom. Uh, do you, I take it you've reviewed the objection letters that have been filed, the six of them? Yes. Including the, uh, the we're going to hear from Mr. Rohn's, uh, uh, he has a 20 page uh, letter with uh, photos. Um, and I'm sure he'll be making uh, submissions to us. Um, so, anyone have any questions for Mr. Dome at this point before we hear from the neighbors? And I can't see a visual on anyone other than. Just, just a quick Lord. question the uh, Humberstone retaining wall around the front, is that being maintained? The retaining wall. I think I'm looking at the right property. It's a Humberstone retaining wall around the front of the property near the sidewalk. Um, I believe it's being maintained. Okay. If I'm looking at the right property. Sure. <laughs> yes. Anyone else have any questions for uh, Mr. Dome before we hear from the neighbors? Okay, so the first neighbor is uh, Sandra Brazell at 84 Queen Anne Road listed as an area resident. And then we have both adjacent neighbors uh, coming up after her. Welcome, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brazell. Hello. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Yes, that's correct. Well, okay. can I start? Yes. Oh, perfect, uh, thank you. Do we have, first of all, do we have a letter from you? I'm just- You also uh, have a letter of objection from myself and my husband. Right, so we'll get that up on the board as oh. you're speaking. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Thank, uh, so, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the committee for allowing me to speak today. Uh, there are four objection letter on. number five to staff. It's, um, it's yeah. letter five. We have a and list actually, of six the way that um, the letter was quite large, so the photos ended up being embedded at the very bottom. So, perhaps you could even, if you haven't read the letter, to quickly look at the bottom just to get a, an idea of some visuals. Um, so, I, I, my husband and I, Rajiv Singhal, and myself, Sandra Brazell, live at 84 Queen Anne Road. We've been there since 1996. And you can see from this, what I want to show from this image, the one that's up right now, the lot. So the lot location is a really key point here. And I think that, first of all, um, Mr. Dobb, I believe his name was, um, Dom, uh, did mention that he um, looked at other properties to the north, and they all have these very deep back backyards. Um, that may be true. However, this lot is very unique in the sense you can see that this lot runs the distance of almost five properties on Queen Anne Road. Um, Louise, who lived in that property on 466, um, I knew her. I, um, she's been there for over 90 years. Her, her uncle, actually, was the person who parceled this entire area. And what he did is he did three long lots for his family. Louise was his niece. They were in that one in that lot that we're talking about today. And she's been there. She was there for her entire life. Those lots were very long for a reason, not to build housing way back into it. They were orchards. They were apple and uh, pear orchards. They were also uh, a tremendous amount of tree canopy was planted around along the between the properties for privacy as well as just for pleasure and shade. So those properties were intended to be garden. The other thing you can see that it abuts 13 Shan, which is another enormous property. And that is another green space that is uh, a jewel to this Kingsway. These two properties offer a tremendous amount of tree canopy and enjoyment to everybody around. You can see my lot is that T-shaped lot. So it is also an unusual lot. And I should mention that in 19, we bought in 96, we did build and we built to code. And we had a similar thing. We had tons of square footage space, but what limited us 
was the front, that length variance, because it is on the narrow side, much to this property we're talking about today. So had I built to my square footage, like what they're trying to do here today, I would have filled the entire back properties of my two neighbors. And is that my right to do that? I don't believe it is. And I don't believe it's 466 right to fill the entire property, 464 backyard with house. And that's what we're talking about here today. So the length of this property, and if you can see my T shape, which is 84, and maybe we can go to the next. You know what, ma'am, with your permission, let's take a look, staff, at the location map for the property. Yours is sort of like on a, it's on a cool angle, but you get a better. If you yeah, up, okay. And these are what's called key lots, and I appreciate the history of why you have these three honking long lots. Uh, 470 is double wide, double wide. Mm -hmm. and then you got 468 and 466. So, yeah, That's actually, right. it doesn't show up as well. I'm. On my Mac, it's much clearer yes. than the. Yeah, and I can't you can really see, see the, what they see put how, up. Yeah, so you can see how that taking tree canopy and having a big giant house, um, yeah. when it's forcing it back, sets the garage behind it. So you have that rear setback of one meter. So then the garage has to go back there behind the fact that we're already asking this this property would if it was built the way he's suggesting is over double. And that's even taking it down a meter over double of what that current house looks like. So that can would go. To, can we now return to Ms., um, the speaker's letter now her diagram? Because that doesn't mm -hmm. we'll go back to thank the you. diagram she wanted us to see. And then I'll, we'll give you some extra time because okay, I didn't. Thank you. It. But um, so, yes, yeah, so um, the issue is the length variance, even though there's no FSI, the length variance is four meters still with the one meter reduction over what's permitted. And then, yes, exactly. And so what happens? So if you take a house that is, you know, you've got 30 feet of frontage or whatever it is. Now he's asking for about 69 feet of house. Then there's going to be a space behind it. Then a garage. We're kind of covering land that had vegetation in it with blacktop over 100 feet of blacktop and then a, um, a garage. So if you can go to the next image. Um, on the bottom, um, you can, if you go to the very bottom, you can see, um, again, looking, well, that's my house. Okay, so that's my property. So our property, as I said, is T-shaped, and you can see there's a brick wall there. And uh, to the right of that, you can see high above all, that's the honey locust, that big giant tree, is the tree that will be damaged from his property. Uh, his build, and then there's a tree in front of it, just the corner of it, which is my tree, the birch tree, and it's a very tall tree as well, and it will be damaged. And then all of the little trees that don't unfortunately meet under our private uh, tree lot by law here in Toronto, the cedars, the bushes, and all that stuff will also be raised in order to allow for this garage, allow for this ex extended house, and allow for this blacktop. So in essence, this visual, and this is not just my visual, it's the five houses on Queen Anne really enjoy these, this tree canopy that you're seeing here. This will be, this space will be uh, filled with house, garage, and the land that could be vegetation will be blacktop. And so that's really from our point of view, uh, something that is not minor. It would be a huge precedent to really, and you, to have my house and then 64 on the other side of 66, his backyard would also have the same impact. His backyard is going to be filled with this visual. And really looking at the house uh, 646, which is just south of him, his entire north wall, his, in, his entire north side of his back lot will be filled with house. So I just feel that this is not something that's reasonable and it's not minor. And it's not desirable and not in keeping with what we've done previously in the neighborhood and the fact that I have built and I preserved, I, I built a code, I preserved a huge oak tree, and I have a similar uniquely large lot. Mm -hmm. So I really, the question is, not only is it not suitable, is it fair? Thank you, ma'am. You've gone over time, but I did interrupt. But thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And for letting us understand the unique 
the situation of this lot and, and even of your lot, that interesting T shape that you have. So um, obviously the length is the big issue here. Uh, so let's go to the next speaker, um, Derek Roan, uh, and we can get his, his objection letter number one up on the board. Uh, while he makes his presentation. Uh, Mr. Chair, as a member, okay. as a reminder, Derek wants to be uh, on video. So Derek, I've moved you to the panel. Okay, awesome. uh, you, are, you are now able to uh, turn your own video on. Okay, sir, and just while we're doing that, I just ed educated the guess, I take it you're a lawyer by profession? Is that a good guess? Yes, thank you for, uh, thank you for acknowledging. Um, I'm sorry, I'm mute. Am I muted or am I, can you hear me okay? You are unmuted, Derek, go ahead. Okay, you, you can't hear me okay. I'll, I'll go off video, I, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's actually ultimately necessary and I, I thank my- Okay, Mr. Chair, um, if Derek doesn't wanna be on video, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take him off the panelist list now so that he's just, uh, he's just an attendee. Has, has proceeded. Okay, Derek, if in, you could, sorry, if you could restart, that'd be great. Thank you. Apologies. And uh, before I make my submissions, I just did have a, I think it was a, it's more of a procedural question. Uh, this application has proceeded in, in fits and starts to some degree. And I, I have seen on, on the materials that have been filed that uh, there has been a, um, I guess, a memo provided by city planning. Uh, recommending a deferral of this matter. Um, am, am I to understand that that is just a recommendation and the um, the applicant can still proceed? Hello? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm back. My computer just died. I'm using my city issued computer as a camera. It just died, so I'm on my cell phone now. Okay. So I apologize for that. And when I just before. You missed I, the question. I, you missed the question, but I could answer that. Okay. Well, <laughs> question. Have we heard? Have we started hearing from Mr. Roan yet? Uh, he asked a question of the chair, um, but uh, yes, they can go ahead with uh, the uh, even though the city has recommended deferral, that the applicant may proceed. Okay, that that that's appreciated. I, I didn't know if it was a, a mandatory deferral. And, and the second point it's is their, it's at their peril, sir. Uh, you know, if okay. it's an automatic matter, it's a notice issue, but he's at his peril because we do not know uh, community planning's position on the merits. So we'd have to take it that they're not in favor, uh, you know, because we don't have any information to the contrary. And I was just so uh, I have your your proposal up on the board. Your sorry, your letter which is uh, very extent, very comprehensive. So uh, sorry that I lost contact. I am back now, so. Uh, not, not a problem. Um, okay. Again, my, my name is Derek Rond. Um, I'm providing input into the process on behalf of myself and my wife, Audra Cook. She's a school principal and unfortunately couldn't make it here today to participate. We're the neighbors south of 466 Prince Edward Drive North. Our address is 464. So we are directly affected. We've put in our submissions and I appreciate that they, they have been posted. Thank you for that. I, I do want to um, to urge the, the the members of the committee to acknowledge that, that not only are the three parties that are, are providing oral submissions today, not only do they have written submissions, but they're also written submissions from uh, Whitlam's, the Linegar Bonuses, uh, Ola Sarant, the Fernies who are across the street and our neighbors to the south, um, Chopra and Decca. So uh, by my count, there is actually eight objections. Mm -hmm. I, I had heard the six figure. I just wanted to confirm that there is almost a universal sentiment in opposition to this, um, to these proposed variances. Sure, and I think the uh, the site, the sorry, the location map shows clearly the situation because of this. The last speaker explained these three historical long, deep lots. Yes. And uh, yes, uh, absolutely. And w while it's fresh in your head, um, I, I would like to to note if you would like to go back to that image um, that I believe is at page twenty seven. You would note, in respect of the um, the variance concerning the setback from the front, you'll see that all of the properties south are aligned. 
and the properties north, as will be explained, are anomalous properties and generally are actually further back, uh, uh, further back rather than closer to the road. So, uh, going on to uh, one item that was raised by by my friend Mr. Dom, um, he, he makes reference to this being a family property. Uh, as we note in our submissions, and I can I can refer you to page four of our submissions. This is a de uh, the applicant in this case is a developer, and an experienced developer. I've included links to the website. Um, it's Build Dome. I, I, I think there should be some degree of skepticism with respect to the idea that this will be necessarily a family property. There's no evidence that it will be a family property and there's evidence that uh, this gentleman is a developer. With respect to the four part test, um, I, I, again, I think the opposition is on all four parts. It's, not, it's certainly not a minor variance and particularly as uh, this panel has noted with respect to the length of the property. Uh, it's not a desirable change. It's putting in a monster home on the property. It doesn't respect the general intent and purpose of the uh, zoning bylaw with respect to the length, the setback, and importantly, uh, tree protection. And it doesn't maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan. And I, I would refer to issues such as um, distance and separation principles, adequate privacy, sunlight, sky view, and shadow. My main point, uh, given the limitations on time, will be in respect of the... the the building length. And if I can draw your attention to. Um, sorry, and if I can take you to page 7 of the submissions. Uh, that's that's my point in respect of the the properties on uh, lined up the. the very, the the setback is is pretty consistent, and I, I'm not sure where Mr. Dom's submission came from. I've included a photo to show the alignment uh, on page seven with respect to the the currently with respect to the two houses. It's almost in lockstep. Um, with respect to the, the the main submission, I can take you to page nine. I think the visual is sort of helpful here to, to see what I'm going to be faced with as a southern neighbor. If you look at the bottom left hand corner, um, the bottom left hand corner, there's the gray line going down. And that represents my rear fence. So the application is looking for essentially a home that will extend the entire distance of my property and will be faced with now that the balcony is gone is actually a full two story building over the the entire length of the property. The maximum building length, um, as we've seen, is 17 meters. And what um, the applicant is looking for is actually an additional four meters, which is almost 25 mm percent -hmm. over what is permitted under uh, Toronto bylaws. I don't think there's any way that 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 any, any variance of that such can be characterized as minor. It's going to have an impact. Uh, we're going to be faced with essentially a wall along the backside of our property, two stories that will affect our, our sunlight, our sky access, and our enjoyment to our yard, as well as our shade. And this is quite simply an attempt to maximize the amount of property possible for the development of that house. Um, with respect to the issue of uh, the, the large tree in the background, I, I think it's important to see what's been done here. There's been, if you go to actually at page nine, I think it gives you the idea of, of where that tree is. The circle that's in that in that picture is the tree. Originally, they intended on destroying it. Now they're attempting to move it one meter back to the right, um, and and that is supposed to save the tree. Given that's a two-story building, I, I I fail to see how that's going to be possible. Sorry, is that sorry? Just interrupt you in your overtime anyway. If you're going to wrap right. up, but uh, if you look at objection letter four. There's a tree on that big, big tree. Is that the tree you're talking about? Um, I don't see it in your letter, but I see an objection letter four. If staff can get that up, it's at the end of letter four, the Whitlam's letter. There's a big honking tree. Right, and actually, it is in my report. If you look at page okay. eleven, that's the that's the tree, sir. Yeah. Okay. 
that same tree, if you go to my report at, at page 11 of my report. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So if you can find page 11, you'll see the large tree there. They want to build up to that. Okay. If you flip the page to page 12, which is a look from me perilously uh, leaning outside my house, um, they want to build all the way up to that tree. One meter, uh, roughly, I think one meter away from it. Oh yeah, and I see your, I see the pictures that come after in your letter. Fourteen. You have a give a good good understanding of the back your background that that Mrs. Brazel told us and showed us in the site plan to see here how that portrait like feeling is there. Right. Uh, and, and, so and if you can is right. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Rutten, so if you can wrap up, please. Right yeah. Please wrap up. Like to summarize. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Or, yeah. Uh, as we pointed out, there's some groundwater issues um, that we're concerned about with such a dramatic build. Um, we think 17 meters is more than enough. It's twice the existing house and twice the existing footprint and would be in alignment with ours, uh, our property as well, which is a uh, a, a qualified, uh, a, a large property as well. There's nothing that's necessary here. And there's a possibility for an, um, a development of a property, but certainly not in a way that is so major and absolutely flouts the the bylaws that are applicable to this home. Okay, um, that's that's those are my submissions. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, I guess karma got me just as my computer. I'm back on my computer now. My plugged it back in. I was just about to ask if you were a lawyer by profession, and karma yeah. got me that my computer broke. So. Uh, thank you for very, very comprehensive. I, as I stated last week, when we had two particularly egregious applications in a row, um, I said to the presenter who, you know, like it, it creates such anxiety for people. They have to, at least you guys had more time. There's a lot of time between meetings, but typically the notice provision and they have to scramble to put together letters and presentations and uh, it creates great uh, anxiety for people, uh, you know, on something that's very important to them. So thank you for putting this together. Um, any questions for Mr. Rohn before we move on to the next speaker? Mr. Taylor? I have a question. So I'm looking at the uh, survey. I'm not sure how old it is. It looks pretty old. And it shows a two and a half story frame addition on the west end of your house. Does that exist? Uh, we, uh, yes, we have an extension of our, our property. Um, if you actually go to page, um, if you go to page 12 of our submissions, I, I took the photo from our second story. Yeah, that, that, that photo, that's where our backyard extends. That's where our, our property extends to. They're looking to go well past that. Can you define well past? I, I want to get it. One meter away, one meter away. I believe they originally wanted to demolish that. If you see that tree on the left, on that photo, yeah, that yeah, tree, yeah. they wanted to go there. They want wanted to go there. I think they want to go one meter back from that. So it's essentially the entirety of my backyard, uh, all the way up, and and they're they're going all the way up to that tree. And, and as you can so see, that well photo, beyond well beyond your two and a half story frame addition. Absolutely. And, and if you also notice, there is beyond that large tree. Um, my friend Mr. Tiemann will probably address it, but there are a number of trees that you can see there that would be affected by by any proposed build as well, because it's essentially going to be a concrete block, a Lego block, all the way down the property. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Um, so you're the neighbor on the, the south side. Now we'll hear from the neighbor on the north side of the property. Um, Chris Tiemann. Mr. Mr. Chair and members, Chris would like to be uh, on video. So I've gone ahead and I've moved him over to a panelist. Chris, uh, this time you can go, go ahead and turn your video on if you'd like. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Uh, I unmuted as well. I hope that works. 
You're good to go, Chris. Can everyone hear me? Chris, uh, uh, Chris, we don't have a letter from you, correct? You do have a letter. There's we a letter do, of opposition. Which, yep. Let's get that up on the board then, staff, while uh, Chris is making his presentation. It's on the way. Okay, perfect. Let me know when you'd like me to proceed. Okay, go ahead anytime. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Tiemann. Uh, I own 468 Prince Edward Drive North along with my wife, Catherine Hoffman, uh, and our three children. Um, an objection letter has been submitted. Uh, I appreciate the time today. I would ask that the proposal and the new extremely minor variances uh, changes to the proposal be rejected outright. Um, for perspective, we have lived in the Kingsway for eight years uh, and in the Bloor West neighborhood uh, for an, uh, for 20 years in total. Uh, we purchased uh, 468 in 2014. Um, the home that we live in uh, was actually the original farmhouse for the entire area. Uh, it was built in now. We have uh, photos of the dirt road with horses running past and uh, open fields around it. Um, uh, it was originally uh, a pear farm and an, an apple farm and uh, 266 next door was segmented off for family members and the niece who was a friend of our family uh, lived in the home until she recently passed in her 90s. Uh, I believe some of the other uh, the other folks spoke to that. Um, I wanted to begin by mentioning that uh, I'm actually surprised to be here today. Uh, I met the property owner soon after it was purchased and we spoke about a renovation and extension that would help improve 266. Um, he seemed affable and friendly, and he assured me that he'd be considerate of the history of the home and the families around. Uh, obviously, that's not the case here today. Um, since then, my experience has been that the property is falling in di into disrepair. All of the greenery in the backyard has been bulldozed one night, including all of the bushes that used to guard where my children play. And uh, a bunch of construction equipment, including a bulldozer, has been left in the rear yard. Uh, I'm here today because the new owner is an independent contractor and they're proposing that they disregard all city variances uh, and all of the neighbors and the neighborhood around them. Um, the plan is to pave the entire swath of land for a single dwelling home. Uh, it'll eliminate a hundred, uh, hundreds of years of preser preserved green space and numerous mature trees, despite what the Arborist Report uh, has in their proposal. The encroachment is going to be within nine centimeters of our property and our residents and construction will put our young children and the property at risk. Um, it's a monster single dwelling house that does absolutely nothing for anyone except the owner of 266 when he flips it to some unexpected buyer who's going to have neighbors who hate their home. Um, aside from the impact of the properties, uh, the buildings well outside the boundaries set by the city. Uh, the most egregious issue, in our opinion, is the dramatic elimination of the green space and the privacy that the Kingsway is known for. Um, this plan, if you look at the report, there are photos of the trees that line the side of the property, as well as their tree from different perspectives in the backyard, the, that large uh, honey, uh, honey something rather. Um, there are 13 40 to 60 foot tall cedar trees. Uh, that block the city noise, dust, dirt, and sun to the south side, to the north side of the property in question, to the south side of our property. Um, the front extension will require partial remover, removal of an ancient 25 foot tall hedge that blocks and protects our homes from the increasing street noise on Prince Edward Drive North. And the back, uh, the back extension is, uh, it's so insanely large that they're planning to destroy a, a decades old and massive honey locust tree that is in excellent health. And that's number seven on the report. Um, for perspective on that tree, uh, it is too large for you to get your arms around and the canopy is almost 80 feet and covers five different properties in the area. Uh, it's probably older than anyone on this call and it's in excellent health. Um, it's actually the sister tree to the one on our property and it's submitted in our objection proposal. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, the other homes in the area have been able to put extensions off the back uh, without having to bulldoze and, uh, and demolish the preserved green space. The sister tree in our yard remains 15 feet back 
from a full ground floor extension completed by the previous owners. And the tree at 466 Prince Edward is eight feet deeper than the one that we have on our property. And the house extends less far into the depth of the lot as well. Um, building uh, a massive rear extension on the back of 466 should never have put these trees in jeopardy. And they, sh they could be preserved easily with a little consideration by the owner. Um, the uh, the former dean of environmental studies and an environmental engineer who uh, who we're familiar with took a look at the property and the trees and said that that tree that tree will remain for decades is, and is one of the most important pieces of the ecology in the immediate area. And even with the minor variance to bring the house within a meter of that tree, there is no way that it would survive. Mr. Tom, can you try to wrap up because you're over the five minute a lot of time? Ah, sorry, of course. Okay. Um, the most egregious variances under consideration are extending uh, eight feet closer to the street than allowed. Um, the new foundation will be 65% closer to our property than allowed and will be 14 inches from our garage and our driveway, putting both in jeopardy. Um, the eaves will be within nine centimeters of our buildings on the property and an elevated second story will assure that the home is overlooking all of the neighbor's yards, all of our children, and the rear extension is all that we were going to be able to see from our home. Um, there's room for, for an exceptional luxury home to be built here. These plans are just so extreme and so damaging that I'm actually suspicious about the intentions. And I can only hope that this is an attempt to make um, uh, future plans seem much more viable at a later date. Uh, thank you very much. For your time. Thank you, Mr. Tymon. Uh, before I see if the other members have questions for you, I'll just point out, I guess we're dealing with, you know, a two and a half meter variance in the front yard, a length of four meters. Uh, you know, Mr. Dorman said, well, it's an hour lot. There's not much we can else we can do. Um, it's obviously a very deep lot, so they don't hit the FSI. But I bet you guys are all happy that uh, they eliminate, I guess, when you wrote your reports, you thought there was going to be a 13 and a half square, me square meter deck in the back as well. So again, you know, the fact that people, I hopefully you guys had more time to, um, to, to and typically because we had a seven week uh, delay between meetings due to the Christmas break, uh, because typically people have to scramble around and, and uh, mobilize to get these letters prepared and pictures taken. So uh, thank you for your for your hard work. I believe they've made a minor change that they are trying to make as a concession uh, to forestry or whomever. Uh, <laughs> Taking a meter off of their existing plans is uh, is a drop in the ocean. Yeah, and they're not waiting, you know, and basically going ahead as is our right, and not wait for community planning to weigh in. Uh, in any event, okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions for comments for Mr. Uh, Tip Hyman uh, or for any of the other speakers? If not, we'll turn it back to Mr. Dome for his uh, rebuttal. No one has any questions. Okay, Mr. Dome. Can you please respond to the concern? Yes, Mr. Dunn, can yes, you please can, respond? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yes, thank you to the neighbors uh, for their comments, and I'll, I'll try to address um, their points in order. Um, first and foremost, while the owner is a builder, this is intended to be um, his family home and um, does need to accommodate um, uh, his livability needs. Um, so I, I really would have to contend um, you know, with some of these uh, comments. Um, as, as well as with the over characterization of the dwelling and its impact um, regarding the length, um, you know, if the objection is how it extends to the rear compared to the neighbors, um, I have mentioned that uh, there are a number of other dwellings on the street, which due to their positioning um, do extend much farther than their uh, neighbors. Um, and these are uh, not mentioned uh, by the other speakers and, and furthermore mitigated. Um, this is mitigated by the fact that it's um, uh, well under lock coverage FSI and the overall height and main wall height uh, variances as well, uh, bylaws as well. Um, and um, the green, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, comments regarding the green space and the maintaining uh, or removing the, the tree. Um, so with the revision, uh, the trees, including tree number seven, will be maintained. 
And uh, there are no soft landscaping variances uh, being requested in, in either yard. Um, Urban Forestry have looked at the materials and they have no objections. And um, I, I would like to also clarify that the dwelling does not go to one meter away from tree number seven, as uh, Mr. Uh, Ron had, had claimed. Um, it, it is clearly, as, as you can see on the, the drawing, it is a, a larger distance um, given the, uh, uh, the revised length. Mr. Dong? Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, and uh, overall, um, we just feel that a lot of these, um, the variances have to do, um, you know, with uh, the existing uh, limitations from the um, maintaining the existing uh, walls themselves. Um, even though it's um, less than 50%, there is still um, uh, existing walls that need to be maintained from uh, the basement and uh, the main floor. And um, it really tries to be as reasonable as possible. Um, you know, we're trying to work within uh, the constraints over here that we have, and and really the only option is to go back a bit further. I, I know it's not, uh, uh, you know, an, an easy thing to come to an agreement on that it's reasonable. Um, but we really feel that the, that is really that the length is the only way. Uh, that we can really accommodate uh, the livability needs and that, um, you know, if you look at um, the dwelling to the north, I believe that's uh, number 512, um, that's also a, a full two-story build that's a similar length uh, to what's proposed. Um, and, uh, yeah, we we just um, feel Sorry, that what, everything what has been done. Um, what did you say, 512? What's that? 512, yes. Um, it's just, uh, I believe it's about nine houses to the north on the same side of the street. 512. I don't see it. It's not in this particular block, right? It's not between Shand and Queen Anne? It's just to the north. Uh, one second. Yeah, it's just past uh, Shand. One, two, okay, three, past, four, fifth, fifth so, house. Yeah, okay, fifth uh, house. okay. So again, it's it's not in this block, as I point, as I mentioned, and I'll mention again, because you stand in this key lot situation, these three particular lots. Uh, yeah, and, and even four sixty. Lot. But but yeah. I'm just saying that you said you mentioned it just when you start off that oh I have examples of other lots that go deeper, but the, the, were those in key lot situations? I think oh no so that's due to the positioning of the the houses yeah. that if the concern is that the rear walls are going to be um, extending farther than the neighbors that there are uh, many houses on the street um, including if you see the positioning of uh, 468 in relation to four um, uh, 468 in relation to 470 um, that basically there's also um, you can see it goes it steps back uh, further as well as those houses. Um, I don't see that on my location map. I don't go see farther than Shand. But my my point is, it's I'm telling I'm I'm arguing that it's suggesting that because you're these three you're in a key lot situation by going deeper than your neighbor, you affect more people than you normally would affect in a standard grid type street. That's that's just what I'm trying to. Yeah, I, I mean see we, we that. Under yeah, we certainly understand more... that, and that's why um, you know the effort is made to try to uh, not infringe on the other uh, bylaws in order to um, to mitigate that. Okay, so you agree that in a key lot situation, the depth variance is more uh, intrusive to others than it would be in a normal standard uh, street grid. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Dome? You were finished or you were continuing? I'll let you go first. Uh, I'm finished. Yes. Okay. Any other one have any questions for Mr. Dome or any of the neighbors for that part? Or is uh, let's take it into committee for discussion and a decision or a motion or if necessary, any commentary? And then we'll take a break or afternoon break. Mr. Kamarik. Just a comment. Um, I, I find myself in the same dilemma that we were in for item 24, uh, not having the benefit of the comment from planning as to 
what they felt would be reasonable for the uh, building length situation, because I believe that was their main concern. And um, so again, we have a reduction of one meter. Uh, is that within acceptable? With is that within what's been approved here? We have no way of knowing. So just, I, I kind of feel. I disagree. I think it's different because here they they chose not to wait because they know what community planning's position would be that four meters passed on the front and two and a half meters in the front. Community planning was not going to be in favor. Well, that's what I'm implying, but we don't have the benefit of that, so we have to assume. Anyway. That was Mr. Doimstone's choice to not wait to get their position. But he made that choice at 1 p.m. this earlier this afternoon. To, Understood, to and that was why I was opposed to go, proceeding with this. So yeah. Okay, thanks for that comment. So, is anyone ready to make a, a motion on this application? Well, I believe that community cited reason number two, which is in order to provide adequate time for staff to appropriately review the application and to discuss any concerns, obtain potential changes, and or secure revised submission material from the applicant for minor variance and or consent applications. So I was kind of hoping that the applicant would choose to go along with that and, uh, and go for the deferral that the city was asking for. Um, and I would be inclined to support community planning on this and uh, it should have been deferred, um, but now I'm going to move for refusal of this application. Thank you. I don't believe it's minor in that. nature. Yeah, um, I, I agree that you know they could have waited, but they they didn't wait. I think on purpose because it wouldn't have advanced their cause. Uh, that's my 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 guess. But um, so it's too late to ask for the deferral at this point, uh, and uh, they've chosen to proceed with what's before us. Do have a seconder for Ms. Uh, Alderson's motion? Mr. Taylor, commentary, please. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, with a comment. Um, yeah, I, I find um, variances one and three combined extend the building length by six meters, which yeah. is 20 feet, which in my mind is, I think last hearing I used the word egregious. <laughs> I don't use yeah. it very often, but I'll use it again. Yeah, it's two and I see two and a half in the front. Variance one is two and a half, and then there's six and a half feet. Six and a half meters. Six and a half meters. Oh, Twenty feet. You know, and, and and in a key lot situation, it, it to me there's a real difference between the grid type street and this situation. It was the first speaker when she put that up, Sandra Brazel, on that angle. You can just see it's it and and that she didn't do it in her situation. So. We have a motion, we have a second, they're all in favor of uh, the motion to refuse the application. Uh, it's unanimous, the application is refused. Thank you to the neighbors and for uh, more, you know, mobilizing and, and getting dealing with what's a very important situation and we'll see what they come back with or if they uh, proceed with an appeal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dome. And thank you to all the neighbors. Okay, uh, how about we take a 15 minute break? Uh, we. I think the rest of the agenda should go pretty uh, pretty quickly. So uh, we've been at this for two and almost two and a half hours since we started. So, uh, Barb, how about we return at um, three thirty-five? Sure, that sounds fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, staff, for as always for your attentiveness. Okay. We'll see you in fifteen minutes.
Okay. Welcome back. Okay, uh, we're almost there. Oh, there he is. Okay, we can get started. So the next application is item number 2942 Shaver Avenue South. It's a new detached dwelling, detached garage, a previous committee of adjustment uh, decision, November 21st, 2019. Approved variances, uh, any variance related to gross floor area. So they had one, uh, now they're looking for four variances. Uh, we have the previous decision before the committee in 2019, um, and we have planning condition of approval. Mr. Chair, we haven't been able, we've been trying to reach the owner for this application for 42 Shaver Avenue South, and they've stopped responding to us. They have not joined the meeting. So can we hold it to the end? And then sure. if they still haven't joined, then it'll probably have to be deferred. Okay, I see there's an email. I tried calling them by email as well, but no answer. Correct. Okay, okay, okay so we'll hold that one down. Uh, let's move on to item number 30. We have a revised notice. Um, again, this one is looks like it's highlighted. It's construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, so perhaps the variances aren't affected. There are five variances. Uh, we have revised plans and zoning notice. Um, we have a cover letter from the agent Eddie Perez. We can ask him about that. Um, and another cover letter directly from the owner. Uh, we have a letter where they've reduced the length and eliminated uh, the coverage and uh, to reduce the height. We have photos, uh, an arborist report. Planning has a condition of approval for letters of support and a letter of opposition that was then withdrawn the next day. So I guess we don't have a letter of opposition. Okay, uh, so the agent is Eddie Perez. And we also have a neighbor uh, at 79 Glen, Glen Aiden uh, registered to speak as well. Mr. Chair, members, the area resident and, and is neighbor, present sorry. on the call at this time. Okay, we also have, I just flipped the page over. There's also another neighbor at 83 Glen Aiden. So that we have either of the neighbors present? Yes, Mr. Chair, both area residents are on the call at this time. And as a note, uh, the one area resident wants to be on video, so we'll make sure we accommodate that when time comes. Okay, very good. Okay, Mr. Perez, welcome. Hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman and Committee Member. I, I'm here on behalf of the owners and designers. Uh, we've been working uh, diligently with the uh, planning department. Uh, we've made some changes to the drawings. We reduced the length, we reduced the coverage. Uh, we also, um, the height was also reduced. And uh, also we, due to uh, the fact that we've been done all these changes and we've been talking with uh, planning about our, our project throughout, uh, we feel that we've done the changes necessary to accommodate. Uh, also, just to give us a quick uh, thing about the length. The length is only where the code room is. The code room is what's bringing in that, that length of 18.39 meters. If you bring up the site plan, the majority of the house is way less than 17 meters. It's just that code room at the rear, which is bringing in that number that makes it 18.39. So the actual length of the whole house is generally less than 17 meters. If you can bring up the site plan to look at it, you can see what I'm talking about. And I guess that's why community planning is asking for a condition to tie it to the plans. That's correct. Okay. And um, also, sorry to interrupt. And also for, I attached a lot of pictures of houses in the area and decisions in the area that have yep. been approved greater than ours. And uh, due to that fact, when, we feel that this is minor in nature and meets the four tests. And we worked on this project very hard on it. We looked at all the houses in the area before we designed it. And we feel that what we bring before you is appropriate for this development. Okay, so we have two neighbors on the line. We'll hear their, you'll, we'll hear what they have to say. I see one letter of objection was withdrawn from the Campbells. That's correct. 84. Um, and then we didn't have letters from the, I believe the other two uh, people that are present, but we'll hear what their concerns are. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna ask, that's it. 
we have revised plans, but staff, is there some reason uh, mine isn't highlighted? It doesn't show I have a revised notice and then I have a notice. Are they are those the same? Because they're not highlighted. No, so the reason they're not revised um, highlighted is because we actually mailed out a revised notice. So the revised plans dated December 22nd are based on the revised notice that you have in your package. Okay, because on, on my I have looks like I have two copies, both says mailed on or before Monday, January the 16th. That's always the last day to mail out. I see, but, but uh, I just in the future, even if it gets mailed out, it would be maybe helpful to the members if they show the highlighted where they made changes, but we've just let Mr. Perez walk through those changes. So again, and for the neighbors, the, I guess the neighbors would, will have this revised one before them in terms of just to make yeah. sure that everyone's talking about the same thing. Also, okay. can, I, can I just interject here for a second? Uh, one of the photos that is has been submitted uh, is is listed as number 81 Glen Aiden, and I actually thought maybe this building had been built. Uh, I've looked at the photograph and I went, "That's the wrong address." So it it has the raw it has the wrong address on. It's actually 85 Glen Aiden, but it's marked at the bottom as 81 Glen Aiden, which is yeah, the application. That, that might have been a typo. Sorry about that. But we're talking about one of the pictures. Yeah, the first picture that was shown says 81 Glen Aiden, but then I zeroed in on the address and it was actually 85. So for a second, I thought it had already been built. But anyway, okay. okay. Just wanted to straighten it out for the record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Perez before we hear from the two neighbors? Okay, if not, let's uh, hear from the first neighbor is Richard Bailey at 79. Mr. Chair and members, Richard Lutt would like to be on video, so if you stand by with me for a moment, I will transfer him. All right, Richard, you are now considered a panelist, so you are able to turn on your camera if you'd like at this time, and I have unmuted you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my concern is uh, the size of the, uh, the structure. Uh, the increased size seems to be well beyond uh, minor. Uh, I don't know what the committee considers minor, but it seems to be well beyond minor. My second concern is that the balcony that they put on the second level uh, will overlook my deck. And uh, that's, that's a matter of uh, privacy. And uh, that's my concern. Okay, um, so that's the extent of what you uh, you want to say that you're. Uh, it looks like the they're entitled to a rear deck. The only thing is it's oversized. So all the committee is is only looking at the overage. The question is whether four meters compared to nine point six five is it going to be people having parties up there? Um, I, I believe that. the city, uh, Mr. Chair. I believe the city is requesting a privacy fence may perhaps they meant to say screen they say privacy fence on this on the balcony the second floor balcony it's one of the it's a, it's it's a, it's a condition it's condition. a condition of approval right i don't i don't think that second door screen covers the south side it covers the east side to my uh my understanding perhaps that's why they've asked for a fence I don't under, I don't understand the wording, so perhaps yes, staff can illuminate. And it doesn't say where. It doesn't say east side, north side. You know, it normally no. says that. So um, sorry, I believe it's depicted on the eight four. Yeah, on eight four it shows um, it says frosted glass, and it also says um, privacy fence. Oh, so it's it's it refers back to their plans. But it is, it does appear only to be on the east side. So, mm. so maybe we can get clarification from the applicant on that and what he's uh, agreeable to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess we, um, we've heard from Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey, you're finished? Uh, well, I, 
I, I'm, I'm not sure what the committee considers minor. Uh, so when we talk about a proposed floor area of 118%, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether that 18% exceeds what the committee normally allows for a minor variance. Every every case there is looked at. Uh, there's no numeric number, you know, in terms of it's 50% uh, higher, 20%. There is no every case is looked at its own merits, so it's not a numerical thing. So sometimes we get letters and everyone you know does the math and says, oh, this one's 31% over, this one's 10%. You know that it's not a numerical thing. Okay. Sometimes even the numerical. Sometimes like if you do an addition in inside the the roof line of your attic, you know, it's not even seen from the street. You know, you have to look at the impact. Uh, so again, we can't give say more than that. Okay, I understand. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. So, Mister Mister, we'll have the the applicant will uh, Mister Prez will respond to your concerns. Okay. Does anyone any of the um, panel members have any questions for Mister Bailey? I never did see him up on the screen. It was just a blank. So I don't know if anyone else got to see what Mr. Bailey looked like, but uh, all I saw was the blank uh, screen. Um, so if no one has any questions for Mr. Bailey, then we'll hear from uh, the neighbor on the other side at 83, uh, either Robert uh, Timberg or Heather Dick. Mr. Chair and members, uh, Heather was present on the call earlier. We did a voice check for her but it appears she has since dropped off the call at this time and is no longer present. Can we try calling to see? Yes, we can try and call in to see, Barb. Mr. Chair, maybe we stand this item down for a moment while we try and get reach out to uh, Heather. We're in the middle of, a, in the middle of the matter. Uh, we're gonna, you know, you have the other neighbor on the line. We're gonna start doing other applications. Um, Okay, if you want to let's do the next application looks like it's re relatively straightforward uh item number 31 30 conamore crescent it's to construct a one-story rear addition and interior alterations to the existing dwelling there are two variances and we have nothing whatsoever on file so a good good one to choose uh the speaker on this application is harun malik yeah good afternoon mrs Michael. Good afternoon, sir. Um, looks very straightforward. Uh, unless you'd like to advise the committee of anything, uh, of anything, I'd like to see if just if they have any questions for you. Just so a one story per addition, two variances. Yes. But that okay. includes the basement too, the addition of the basement too. Okay, but these are the variances, right? So um, this is there's interior alterations to the existing dwelling. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Um, Malik, or is someone ready for a motion? No one has any questions. I'm prepared to make a motion. I find the variances requested minor in nature and desirable uh, and move for approval with no conditions. Okay, thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor? You have unanimous approval, Mr. Malik. Thank you. Have a oh, wonderful day. Okay. Uh, next application, item number 32, another uh, very straightforward one. It's uh, 172 Fifth Street. It's to construct a two story rear addition. A previous committee of adjustment application approved oh variances related to floor <laughs> space index, side yard setback, and roof eaves. So and good. now they're looking one variance for the uh, south side yard setback from 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.3. And um, We have, we have a previous decision, the cover letter. Uh, they're pointing out this is um, due to an error in the architectural drawings in relation to the existing survey. Um, so point four was, yeah, that was permitted by COA, but it's showing on the variance. I just had a question for staff at point six, but they received point four approved on their previous approval, in February 2022. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, should that not have shown on the variance that when it goes out to the neighbors that whereas the minimum required setback is normally 0.6 in this case by committee of adjustment uh 
decision X, Y, Z, they were approved at point four, and now they're going to point three. The variance that... always goes back to the original bylaw because it's a variance to the bylaw, not the decision. Okay. Well, so I, would it be permit anyway? I just think as an additional information to neighbors uh, in such situations when there's been an interim approval for something in between, it would be good to let the neighbors know about and the, and the, and the uh, assuming the members know as well. Um, okay, so if there's no change to that. Uh, the agent is Derek Lai. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and Committee. Good afternoon, sir. So I've estimated that's what happened here, which is the minor error in the architectural drawings compared to the survey. That's right. Yes, the, the model got shifted north uh, in error by four inches, um, 0 0.1 meters. Yeah, so you're here asking for 0 0.1 meter, although on the face of the decision, it goes out to the neighbors, it looks like it's more, but okay. Um, members, motion. any questions or please, uh, we're ready, someone ready for a motion. I'm good to go with the motion. I believe the application is very minor, meets the four tests. I'd like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Thank you, Mr. Kamara. Seconded for that. Mr. Taylor, I didn't have a visual on you. I do now. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, I have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Mao. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Lai. Mr. Lai, he was in the last application. No worries. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Okay, did we? Uh, let's go back to item number uh, just knocked off two. Uh, are we back to number 30? Mr. Chair, yes. Let's go Adam, back to number 30. To we have, neighbor? Mr. Chair, we have confirmation that um, Robert and Heather uh, do not want to speak at this time now. Okay, that's fine. We heard enough from the other neighbor um, on the other side, I guess. Okay, uh, so I guess we have to now go back to the agent. Um, Eddie Perez to respond to Mr. Bailey's uh, concerns and uh, Mr. Perez. Well, Hi again. Uh, as per uh, the balcony, uh, we discussed with planning and planning uh, said to put it on the east side because that's the side that's closer to the neighbor. So we put a privacy fence on that side. But if it's necessary to put it on the other side, we don't have any problem with that as well. But th that side is it's a great distance away from the neighbor. So planning only asked for the privacy fence on the one side, which we accommodated. And as per- On which, on, on which side? On the side next on to the Mr. East side. Uh, 83? On east, east, east side. The east okay, side is, is, is closer to the, the property the of the neighbor. The east side is 79. Okay, so that was the, the neighbor who spoke, Mr. Bailey, who wants the privacy screen. So he's gonna be getting the privacy screen, correct? Correct. Okay, and we don't know about the other neighbor because he was supposed to be on the line. Oh, no, wait, wait, sorry, east, the west side is 79. So oh, we're okay to the west. The we're not. So it's not on Mr. Bailey's side. Mr. Bailey would like, a, would like that. I think Mr. Perez agreed to that too as well already. Yeah, we're okay. we're okay. He we're said okay. that would be fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're okay with that. Thank you, Mr. Brez. Okay, and then also, uh, uh, if I can just put, uh, address one other item that she was saying about the impact. Um, we don't have any coverage at all. We have greater si side yards, so there's no side yard variances. The length, as I spoke earlier, was only in the code room. So like I said, I feel that this is very minor in nature and it meets the four tests. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, members, any follow up questions on this? Uh, either for Mr. Bailey or Mr. Perez, or is someone ready for a motion? And we have the condition on the, it's a little weirdly worded, but I guess we know what. Well, we can add to it now. We've got to say east and west. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they all, and also the, yeah, they're also concerned with the length to be tied to the plan. It's sort of worded a little funny, but they're looking for two things, I think, not one. 
They want to build as constructed pursuant to the length, and then they also want the inclusion of a privacy fence. It doesn't quite talk about one point, but I guess we all know and the city knows that means one Mr. Perez knows that's a 1.5 meter high screen, op opaque uh, screening as opposed to an actual fence. <clears throat> okay, so um, so is that a motion? Someone making a motion? I'm ready to make a motion. Stan, Stan had his hand up. Stan, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, 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 I'll second it. <laughs> okay. You can do the next one. I will, um, I, I find this uh, application to be in keeping with the four tests. And uh, I move approval subject to the planning condition. And just to be on the safe side, I'll put some words in. Um, I, will, I will amend the condition so that it reads at the bottom, as it relates to the inclusion of a 1.5 meter high opaque privacy fence on the east and west sides of the second floor rear yard platform. Okay, thank you. Seconded for that, Mr. Kamarik. All in favor, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Perez. And thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank you for your participation. Mr. Um, Chair, okay. Mr. we now Chair. have the agent. Oh, go ahead, Adam. Mr. Chair, we have the agent on the call now for item number 29. And to note, there's a change in name. It's Giorgio Lolos that will be presenting the file for item number 29. Okay. And Mr. Lolos should know better that he's required to pre-register for a hearing for future applications. Okay, so... Um... Just to give a brief introduction, this is an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. A previous committee of adjustment application approved the variance related to gross floor area. There now are four other variances. Um, usually it's the other way around that they approve four and they're looking for one more. Here they approve one and are looking for four more. We'd like to hear about that. Uh, why it's being piggybacked when we hear from him. So we have a copy of the previous decision, uh, which is back in November of 21st, 2019. And we have a planning recommended uh, condition of approval tying it to plans. Okay, um, Mr. Lolo. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee and of course members of staff, specifically, especially Barbara. Thank you, Barbara, for that note. I should have pre- uh, registered, but I thought uh, it was done. By my apologies to the committee for the delay. Um, we have in front of us the board variances in this in this uh, agenda today in this item. The reality of the matter is the only the only thing that we added to the existing structure itself is we excavated under the rear yard covered loggia area that we originally was unexcavated. In that, in that, by saying that, it, it addressed and it, it put all these other uh, tangible variances to it. So in all in all in all senses in all reality, we haven't we haven't changed anything above ground as the existing structure sits as it's built right now. The only thing we've done is we excavated the existing rear yard covered porch, thus activating these four, four variances. If I can simply just illustrate it in the most simplest way of expressing it. Yeah, because usually it's the other way around. You had I agree. Yes, if right, we got this, this now we're building a pool or we missed something. You no, know, no, 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 no. We uh, it, we got we, one. And actually, it's interesting. You got it like a long time ago, uh, I guess, yep. just before COVID, and uh, I guess didn't proceed. So now, because of the excavation, correct, you're otherwise the same plan. Um, interesting how that happens. Okay, so that's the explanation. Thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you any Chair. committee members? Anyone have any uh, questions for Mr. Lolo? If not, is someone ready to uh, weigh in with a motion? And I don't have visuals on anyone. Oh, there we go. Get in there. Someone ready to weigh in? Oh, that's Ken. Yes, sure. I'll, I'll go. Sorry, I, I didn't realize. Forgot you can't see me. Um, yeah, I, I find the application to to meet the four tests and would like to move approval, uh, subject to the planning condition, uh, which is tying it to the plans of November fourteenth, twenty twenty two. 
Okay, I'm thank happy, you. I'm happy to second that. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous, you got unanimous approval, Mr. Lolo. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next application, it's our one application under section 53 of the after the day, uh, can for consent to sever uh, the lots at 29 DeMarco Boulevard into two undersized residential lots. And uh, on the, uh, to demolish the existing uh, uh, dwelling on the lot and to uh, redevelop the site as of an, on each side as a new detached dwelling with an attached garage, each requiring variances to the bylaw. In one case, in the retained lot, part one, six variances, and in part two, the conveyed lot, seven variances. Um, there are different uh, frontages and different uh, meters squared, these two lots, so they're not being split directly in half. And we have on this application planning justification report. report. We have a memo from engineering and construction services. Planning is recommending refusal. Uh, there are seven letters of support, two letters of opposition. And uh, we have in the additional materials, urban forestry requesting, well, we had requesting conditions one and three, that's not in the additional materials. And in the additional materials, we have a letter of objection from 33, DeMarco, and as well as a letter from Councillor Nunziata recommending refusal. Okay. And uh, the speaker on this application. The chair. The chair. In the additional information, there's also requested revisions to the variances. Substantial. No, I didn't see that. Sorry, there's. Substantial mm -hmm. revisions to one of the several pages. Well, that's a response to the planning report. It's up on the screen. Essentially. Okay, so that's that's in the additional materials. Yeah, but but they're requested revisions to the variances being asked for. So okay, well that's not certainly happening on the fly. Um, so anyway, let's let's uh, just about to introduce who the speakers are. The agent for the applicant is. Svetomir Sojanovic, and then we have neighbors from 32, 31 DeMarco, and 44 Peachum Crescent uh, registered to speak. Mr. Chair, I can confirm that all area residents are present at this time. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have that document I can't read on that screen in any event, so I'm going to open it up on uh, my other laptop. Um, and in the meantime, let's. Uh, Let's um, hear from Chair, the agent. Chair, before we proceed, there, are we allowed to make a recommendation that this item be deferred to allow people to review any requested revisions, including staff? Is Absolutely. I would think uh, within the purview, Ms. perhaps uh, Madam Secretary Dresher can confirm that the staff, the panel members are at liberty to uh, recommend uh, deferral uh, based on what's uh, they find before us, and I haven't really seen that. I see the counselor's letter. I missed that supporting material, uh, and if they're requesting changes, then we we haven't had heard from Svetomir. Uh, but if that's the case, uh, my position would be that it's certainly within the purview of the committee to say I'm not prepared to hear to hear this and make a decision based on this. So, as a decision Chair, makers, Chair, can I just say something on this? Yeah, I, I would say if we're going to hear from the applicant that they go along with a deferral because otherwise they might not like the decision that's made. Okay, but I'm, in addition, I haven't seen if they're asking for all kinds of changes that is not permitted without uh, having the matters with having the information filed with staff in the appropriate manner. So that almost begs the question that they need to get a deferral if they want these particular changes considered. I, I would suggest okay. that the recommendation that the submission is making a request for substantive changes. Yeah, that either to withdraw that and proceed, or if you want that considered, you're going to have to defer. Okay. Anyway, let's hear from. Uh, let's get him uh, on introduced and on the un unmuted. <laughs> is, is Svetomir Sujanovic. Svetmir, go ahead. You're unmuted. Good afternoon, sir. Have you been listening to what the members have been discussing? Mr. 
Mr. Chair and members, Svetmir is unmuted and he is present on the call. Svetmir, go ahead. As a note, Mr. Chair, we, he, he microphone checked fine earlier today. Okay. Can we try calling him? We have a number of, uh, as I said, a number of neighbors, three neighbors on the line as well. But uh, I haven't taken a look at that uh, report. But Barb, in the interim, uh, can you confirm that, as I advise Mr. Uh, Palmer, that uh, certainly committee members can uh, bring a motion to defer at the outset of a hearing? Yes, because this, what's before the committee today is the original application that was mailed to the public. Uh, we do not have revised plans. We do not have revised zoning information. So if he's planning revisions, it should be deferred. Right. So it's almost not even, a, I can see another case where the member, everything's before us and the member says, I want this deferred, even that's permitted. But in this case, it begs the question, because if he wants what he's considered, what he's just filed, considered, unless he's going to get a refusal because he just wants to go to, to appeal, uh, <laughs> Then, then it's not going to happen because he's going to be considered on the other information, not including the substantial changes provided in the additional materials at the last minute without accompanying yes. plans. And he okay. could consider speaking to the concerned neighbors because there's Correct. a few people present. Yep. Okay, did we were able to find him? I just sort of thought I heard something in the background. Adam, we don't have we been able to make Mr. Chair, they are no, Mr. Chair, they are still unmuted, um, but we will uh, go ahead and try and call them right now and see if we can get a hold of them. So if we want to stand this one down for a moment, we can uh, come back to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the balance of the applications, at least in other than the two at the three o'clock agenda, are deferrals. So this is a previous deferral from October 13, 2022. Uh, Six Hill Heights Road. It's to convert a portion of the existing basement into two additional dwelling units. There are three variances. Um, this was deferred in order to, in September, uh, September 20th email to, re to revise as the, as the uh, yeah, planning department said they'd only support one bedroom unit and the other one, it was proposed to be a bachelor. They wanted use for amenity space. And I see that was back in October. Now they're back on the agenda and they are again asking for two additional dwelling units. So we'll hear something about that from the agent. And the agent is uh, Jan, Jen uh, Timstra. How are you doing? Hello. Hi. Um, just as a, a quick correction, um, yep. the drawing there should only show one apartment with the application was only for one apartment, not two to meet with the planning department. So you should have a draw, your, your plan should show a, uh, a one bedroom unit, but also a uh, set of a bachelor unit. We converted that, we removed it and made it into a community room, which was required. So, so maybe just, so, uh, Mr. Timster, so uh, perhaps staff, Barb, uh, I guess the purpose of the application is wrong, which is to convert a portion into one additional dwelling unit and one amenity space. Can we change the purpose of the application that no one, I guess that was the purpose of the last time. Yes. Right? But the January 16, 2023, uh, mail on before is how I identified this document, says the purpose is for two additional dwelling units. <clears throat> Okay, so for one additional dwelling unit, and then what was the other part? The other, the other part was instead of having the bachelor unit, we made that into a community space, which which was what the planning department wanted for amenity space, interior for the uh, tenants. Okay, so um, interior sure. amenity space. Yeah. Okay. So the space yeah, next yeah, to the laundry room was to be a bachelor, but that's now. A community room. So I guess it's it's referred to it as indoor amenity space. Yes. Interior, right? Okay. Yes. Yep. Because there, the three variants are for the indoor and outdoor amenity space. 
But before we proceed, can I just get clarification on variants two and three? Sure. Um, variants two, the, the ending of it reads, the proposed indoor amenity space will be 19.6 square meters for each unit. And it says the, the bylaw requires a minimum of four square meters. Are you actually that's saying gotta, it's- That's gotta be a total. That's for the whole it's, building. It's supposed okay. to be so the total. total is gonna be 19.6 square meters. So we need what it's going to be on a per unit basis. And the same, I think, applies to variants three, which says uh, the outdoor amenity space will be 24.4 square meters, which I guess is the total square area, but you're looking for a variance on a per unit basis. I know this is splitting hairs, but- Yeah. No, it should be corrected. No, it should be corrected. I think what you, got, what you can do easily rather than divided by the number of units is just in the second variant say, the proposed indoor amenity space will be 19.6 square meters, period. Just take out for each unit. Then it'll follow the format as variant three. It just says what the total is. Because otherwise, what you're saying is you got to take 19.4 and divide it by- 27. Okay, so for, variance, yeah. so for variance number one, it should be the altered apartment building will have 28 units with a lot area of 93.6 square meters per dwelling unit, correct? No, because no, 27. There, are, there are an existing 26 units. 27. The previous application was for two new ones to make it 28. This is actually only gonna be 27 units. Okay. I have a question. I mean, the notice is wrong. I mean, it, it says two additional dwelling units. Can we proceed with this? Yeah, I'm saying we're, first of all, with the purpose is wrong. And now we're finding out by further drilling down that yeah. variance one has something wrong with it. It says, the I, I mean, I, and then I, I don't, I don't see how we can proceed with this. Well, well, the variance, submitted. Two. variance three is right. Variance three is right. And variance two is correct. That's cool. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. It has to take out the words for each unit. Well, Very it doesn't say dwelling unit in number two. It doesn't. Sorry? It does not say dwelling unit, but it does say it does say dwelling units in number one. Variance number one, it says we'll have okay. 28 dwelling units. Okay. And the one purpose is of the application does three. say dwelling units. So those two, those two, the purpose and variance one are wrong. Variance two, you just have to take out for each unit. Variance one, the area of the whole building is 93.6 meters. No, it should be per dwelling talk. unit. Yeah, for, for variance, variance number one, it's an existing condition. It's an existing building and it's existing in its existing lot. We can't change, we can't change No, but the, the area per dwelling unit has decreased because you're yeah, adding it, an additional unit. How, how much is 139 square meters? Like, a, are the, those are the, like a it's thousand foot feet. 1,500 square feet. 1,500 square feet. Are the Variance. units that big? That's 1,500 square feet. Long. I can't believe that a, a bylaw requirement would be so great under 569 2013. That's, I it's think, not, that it's, no, 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 no. This is the minimum required lot area per dwelling unit. It's, it's not, not the a, size of the unit. But the amenity space is not a dwelling unit. No, 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 variance know. one. Yeah, let's let's deal with it separately. Anyway, variance I think, it's one, long, I, think, I think we should defer the whole application. I, I, I think there are too sorry. many errors in it. Anybody, there are sorry. two at least glaring errors in this application. That's the purpose the of the application so you, some public member could say they didn't understand what it meant, that they would have, well, it's only one. But these are these variances, variance two at minimum has to have the last three words taken out, and variance one, I don't understand at all. Well, it says 28, for we'll have 28 dwelling units, and they'll have tw 27 dwelling units with an amenity space. So it's wrong. Well, or, okay. or is it 28 units move before for you add this one more? For proper notice. That's what my motion yeah. is. Yes, per oh, perfect. Okay. I think that's a perfect, and I will second that motion. Okay, all, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Enough, enough for time spent. Sorry, who seconded that? Sorry. I didn't see. Uh, Laura did. Laura. Oh, Sorry, is this being deferred? That? Who made the motion? Neil made the motion and okay. Laura seconded. We all okay, voted. So, yeah, we didn't even hear. Did we ever even hear from Yan? Like, where's Yan and all this? I'm still here. 
Okay, so <laughs> sorry, sorry, sir. There's you got to check these uh, these applications. It's completely, you know, it's I don't want to blame you, but the application, first of all, the purpose is wrong, and then if you read the uh, the all the least one and two are got to be something. There's something wrong with number one, and number two should have the the words out. So by its very nature, you could argue it's some proper notice that the public. Should have been aware. It's too many mistakes. So the committee, Mr. Palmer, jumped in with a motion, and uh, I believe there's due process. The matter has been deferred, though. So we'll please contact staff tomorrow to try to get this. Yeah, because because they're the ones who wrote it, and unfortunately, it's yeah correct. Okay. No, there's the yeah, old, we'll see here again. Be, I gotta be the devil's advocate in this one. Um, what's being proposed is less than what was on the notice, so technically, it's not a notice issue. That's in the purpose, but the variances are wrong too. Okay. But they're yeah. less than what, what, what the requirement. But they're less than, I mean, I, I'm gonna go on record as voting against the deferral, okay. but it's gonna go, ha it's gonna happen anyway, so. Okay. We apologize for the deferral. <laughs> well, okay. it's, that'd be our second one in a row now. Okay, um, so are we back to item 33? Mr. Chair, yeah, we can give a shot at number 33. Uh, um, Svet Moore is back on. They did log out and log back in. So we'll give him a shot now and see if we can hear him. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Svet Moore, you're unmuted. Hello, sir. Do you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Svet, uh, Svet Amir, did you hear the original introduction when we were talking about this application? Yes, I have. Okay, so you've apparently, um, you know, you the community planning is against your application, and we have neighbors uh, on the line ready to speak, uh, and the, the councillor is against it, and in the additional materials, you've come up with uh, a whole bunch of changes. We cannot consider those changes today, so you have two choices. You can defer and you can get proper notice with these changes that you've made and come back and have it considered by the committee. Or you can proceed today on what's before us, which is not what you sent that we just received in the additional materials. Uh, I would like to defer. Okay. Probably the best choice. Good plan. Because, yeah, you, would, you would likely be refused by this committee, uh, probably unanimously. Um, I'm not speaking at a term. So, uh, that's fine. We'll have to we have to weigh in with the three neighbors about the deferral. They should be happy because hopefully you'll be making these changes, which are going to improve the application, and there will have to be re-notification. So please hang on, and uh, we can speak to the other uh, neighbors. Okay. So the first neighbor is uh, 32 Demarco Boulevard. Mr. Chair Anna or Nat? Yeah, Mr. Chair members, in this case it's Nat Nayugan. And uh just one okay. moment while I look for them here. Actually, Mr. Chair members, they were on the call earlier, well all all meeting, but they have since appeared to have dropped off. Okay, let's try the next one then. Next Anna one is, Del Ira. In this Daniel, case, Mr. Chair, Anna. it'll be it'll be Anna. Okay. This is from 31 DeMarco. Hello. Right next door. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you for staying on the line since one o'clock this afternoon on this matter. Um, as you may have been listening to, we were trying to make contact with the applicant and tell him he's either going to have to defer or proceed with what was before us because he's he's made a whole lot of changes, but we can't consider that. So we're going to be looking to defer this and you will be re-notified. And in the meantime, you can check in the, uh, the AIC and to see what's been filed there because he's going to be improving his application. I understand that, but if you might be asking, do you know how long it's going to take for a new date? For uh, as long as it takes him to make those changes, you will be re-notified, but until that happens, uh, it won't be built. It won't okay. be heard. You will be re-notified. Hopefully, obviously, the applicant would probably like to do it sooner than later, but it's a question of when he can do the what he has to do and get a new new hearing date. Uh, so I'm assuming that these uh, new changes were sent in too late, and I think yes, that's correct. very inconsiderate. 
because you know people uh, as myself i took the day off just to be able to be at this hearing which is very important to me and my husband yes. as owners next door and now we're gonna have to redo the same thing and okay well i'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that hopefully you know uh, i don't know if you're in touch with your neighbor or with his agent but hopefully the changes will be uh to your liking and if not uh you'll have to deal with this uh you know again there's nothing we can do about it but we uh he's chosen to defer in order to make the application i haven't seen the changes uh the members tell me they are quite significant they are and i also would like to add something if i may well if it's going to the merits we really are it'll be a different panel that's hearing this different members Okay. But if it's just something, uh, you know, if it's going to the merits of the application, it's premature to hear from that. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the new meeting, uh, after all these changes are made, uh, we would have probably to send in another objection letter. Uh, well, you'll have to revise your first one if it gets better. Uh, right. Because it'll be different. Okay. Maybe you'll have the same objections, but you'll have to see once he makes the changes, but certainly You'll have the right to attend, you'll have the right to send in letters, and you will be notified. And we I apologize to you for, obviously these things are very important to people in the time they put together and the anxiety of writing letters and taking time off work and waiting on the hold. So I understand that. Yeah, it's very upsetting because, you know, people make changes in their lives in order to be able to be present at the hearing. And then these things happen, you know, on, on my point of view is that this these changes should have been done sooner rather than on the on the knee. Excuse me, man. Um, yes, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Miss uh, Daira, thank you very much. Um, so uh, we'll go on to the next neighbor present, the last uh, neighbor uh, objecting, uh, the the Wood Al Janabi at forty four Peacham Crescent. Hi, sir. Uh, this is Dawood. I'm uh, pretty much the owner of the house at the back. Uh, so far, I did have a problem with the... Uh, I, I think you, you just mentioned that there were only two rejection letters, and apparently my rejection letter wasn't mentioned in there. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with the city of Toronto as well as... Well, I, have, I have your, your letter is here. Your, your letter, I have it up on the screen here. Okay. Twenty. It says you're at twenty Jacinda. Yeah, twenty Jacinda. Okay. Right. The house in the back. But what's forty four Peacham? Oh, that's another property of yours. Yes. Or... Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But that's not in the vicinity. It's the one at twenty Jacinta yeah. that's behind. Yeah, twenty Jacinta. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so we have uh, your letter here. Yes. And hopefully he'll be making changes that are going to improve the situation. Okay. And he'll certainly be given notice and chance to revise your letter or stay with the letter. And, Great. Uh, make submissions when this uh, matter is heard mm -hmm. i just want to mention because like part of the application when you consider the first hearing or like this hearing uh you um i mean all the drawing uh were submitted based on uh having no trees in the lot and the owner cut down the trees without any kind of permit from the city so all the trees whether the front yard trees or the backyard trees were removed without any kind of permission and uh, apparently, the uh, the plans that, that that we have don't do not mention or do not show any kind of trees. Like, basically, even if you I go to, to Google Map, if you go oh. to Google Map and look at the uh, pictures that you have on the property on October 20, uh, 2021 and compare it to the October twenty twenty two, the trees were gone. So part of this kind of you know the the consideration. I believe it's illegal even to have uh, a meeting until we probably oh. get the, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the department that they take. I can't send you videos. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, sir like, urban, like, forestry, uh, urban forestry comments on all the applications. They have commented on this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I assume they're aware that the trees have been cut down. I don't know if anyone called or if you complained when they did that or... Uh, if they were permitted to take those trees, but urban forestry is involved with this application. Okay. If they've done something, then uh, I guess that should be, you'll be a, have a chance to talk about that at the next hearing as well. Sounds good because we didn't get- okay, We're just dealing with the deferral today. Yeah. yeah, myself, I didn't even have the notice in the proper time. 
You know, if I didn't hear from the other neighbors, I wouldn't know about this meeting and, you know, and, uh, to sh like basically to show up in here. Okay. So I believe the, I'm not sure who's man managing this, uh, uh, this file, but I would really appreciate if you can, you know, change the person who operates on the, well, on the file. I believe, I believe or, you, did you receive a notification in the mail to the, no, uh, not at all. The no, address, I um, hear the from, yeah. no, I, I heard about it from the neighbors only. If I, if, if I wasn't like in touch with the neighbors, I wouldn't be here today. Do you live at the property or you live at the other property? Which I live at the future? other property. Yes, I, I live so at the property. You know, maybe you're, you have a tenant at 20 Jacinta, maybe the letter. They never over. received anything. No, they never, sir. Okay. They never. Okay. Anyway, staff will look into it. I guess you're within the, Thank you're you. within the notification area. Okay, we'll see you here again. Mr. Okay, Chair. So we've checked in with the neighbors. Mr. Yeah. Chair and members, there is one more uh, area resident that wasn't on your list. Um, Charlene Nunez is also present on the call and like to speak. Okay. What's Char your address? Or Charlene, go ahead and introduce yourself with your name and address, please. Charlene, you're unmuted. Go ahead. As a reminder, Mr. Chair, this was a late addition and a late join to the meeting, so we didn't get a chance to microphone check them. Chances are good. They haven't authorized the use of their microphone at this time. But we can keep trying here. Charlene, go ahead. Oh, Mr. Chair, they've dropped off. Okay, this is just on the matter of deferral. It's just a courtesy to touch it by base with the uh, with the neighbor. I don't think anything the neighbor was going to say is going to change the issue of the deferral uh, that the uh, applicant has chosen, or one of the two choices that the committee gave him. So, uh, sorry, we don't have been heard from that neighbor. They're not even on my on my list, and I don't know what they would have added to this. So, committee members, uh, motion to defer in order to have the applicant uh, revise and provide plans that go along with what he's provided very late in the additional materials. Yeah, I'll move for deferral. Thank you. Seconded for that. Second. Eric, thank you. Everyone not at once. Looks like it's unanimous. The application is deferred. Mr. Svetomir, we'll see you back here again. And uh, hopefully you'll be making changes to address community planning and the neighbor's concerns. Okay, um, where are we? Mr. Chair, I think we're on item number 35, 24D Act. We did 34, right? Yeah, 35. Correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, 35 is, again, this matter was deferred from the December 8th hearing, 24D Avenue. It's an application for a new covered front porch and a new detached garage in the rear yard for five variances. Matter was deferred. Uh, Previously, uh, it was sent under a consent notice when it's a variance and uh, that, so there's a staff notice and automatic deferral. Planning is now asking to uh, just add a condition of approval that there be no habitable space in the garage in their memo dated November the 14th. Urban Forestry looking for condition number two. And the agent on this application is Murray Fern. Mr. Fern, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, committee members. Um, yeah, it's Murray Fern uh, speaking on behalf of the owner of 24D Avenue. Hopefully this um, application will be simpler than a lot of the previous one. Um, okay, yep. So we don't have anything on file other than you know, materials from the previous hearing. Uh, it was an automatic deferral. I guess you're okay with the community planning condition and urban forestry condition too? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you'd like to advise the committee members of? Um, well, I don't think so. Other than, um, uh, again, we're proposing to construct a new garage in the, in the rear of the yard. Uh, we require four variances for that. And uh, we were, uh, we are wanting to construct a, a new front porch and a covered front porch and steps, which require one variance. And um, we have consulted with the planning department and I guess the variances in front of you, they, they had, had no further objections. So um, other than that, I think um, um, we're hopefully- Okay, let's just see if anyone has any questions for you. Yeah, just to clarify, the uh, staff report from community planning is dated November, 2022. Does it still apply? I guess we don't have a more current one. 
Yeah, it was yeah because yeah, it was the intervening deferral. It was in the previous materials. That's yeah, why. That's why. Yeah, and the deferral was just there was some deferred to make changes. It was it was just there was a okay. So no still habitable space. Yeah, it's still applicable. Okay, no habitable space. I think it's okay. You ready to make a motion? Uh, yeah, sure. I can do that. Um. Nothing from anyone other than, uh, sorry, urban forestry and community planning. So I find the uh, variances requested are minor in nature, meet the four tests, and uh, and I move for approval subject to uh, community planning condition uh, and urban forestry condition number two. Okay, thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconded by Mr. Taylor. Thank you all in favor. Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Fern. Be well. We'll see you again. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next application is item number 36, 176 6th Street. It's an application for a new three story rear addition, a two story addition over the existing detached dwelling. There's three variances. Um, Planning has a condition of approval. They want it constructed as illustrated uh, as it relates to the design of the front facade, the front east elevation to tie it to that. We have uh, 12 letters of support, one letter of concern, um, materials from the previous hearing. This matter was deferred uh, in the June 9th, 2022 hearing. Um, and we have an additional materials. The minutes was deferred to consult with community planning. And we have urban forestry looking for condition number four. Uh, the speakers for this application is uh, Ryan Wallace, the agent for the applicant, as well as we have uh, two neighbors with 177 and 178 6th Street, across the street and next door. Mr. Chair, I can confirm both area residents are present on the call at this time. Okay. So we'll hear first from uh, Ryan Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ryan Wallace here, 22 Alonzia Drive. In Etobicoke, I am the agent for the owners, uh, Greg and Patricia, and uh, it's my pleasure to bring this back before you. It was deferred, as you said, from June 9, 2022, and it's given my clients the last six months or so to work with city staff to address some of the concerns. Uh, it initially came forward with four requested variances, and now we're down to three. And uh, the report that you have before you uh, considered favorable with one recommendation that we adhere to the plans as submitted dated November 28, 2022. Um, this is the happy circumstance that uh, that's exactly what my clients are requesting. And so we're looking for uh, the committee members to find these variances to be minor. Uh, happy to answer any questions, uh, proceed as best we can, and hopefully move forward with the construction of a beautiful new home. Uh, 176 6th Street. Okay. Um, we happen to have, I guess, we have two neighbors present. We have one letter. First of all, we have 12 letters, form letters of support. We do have the one letter of concern, and that's one of the uh, two parties that's present to speak here today, uh, which would be the next door neighbor. And then we also have the neighbor across the street. So, um, the first one on my list is the neighbor across the street. So usually go. All right, through. Mr. Chair, can we get some questions to the applicant? Oh, sorry, sorry. What am I? What am I doing? Um, what am I doing here. And, and can I just? Sorry. Yeah, I, I interrupted you. Please give, make us. No. Uh, Stan, you go ahead. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I have two questions. One is the north uh, setback, which is zero meters. Is that an existing condition? Yes, that is the existing wall. We're retaining about 50% of the existing walls and uh, just building up on that wall. Uh, so that is the existing. Uh, so property. on the new part, is, is there going to be an improvement on that? I'm sorry, how do you mean improvement? Less than zero or more than zero? Uh, it will be just the same, uh, only building up, except for one. You're, if you're referring to the back part of the parcel, Correct. the addition is. We have revised that, and if you look at the plans as submitted, they are now, I believe it's two feet set back at ground level. Okay, good, that, that's, that's good, thank you. And then my other question pertains to forestry. I believe they were requesting a deferral, so I'm assuming they had some issues with you, just wondering if that's been resolved. 
So as far as I understand, they have concerns about any impact to two city-owned trees in the right-of-way. Uh, the one on the south, if I can say left, as you're facing yeah. the, the frontage, is uh, farther away. It is larger, but it is farther away from the building. Um, the one closer is smaller. Um, I'm not a forestry expert, but you can see if you overlay the survey that shows the location of the trees with the plans as uh, as submitted, there is a very minor encroachment on the yeah. canopy area. No, that's good. That's yeah. good. Thank I'm you. good with that. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do our best, of course. To, no, no trees are being removed, just to protect yep. them as best we can during construction. So urban forestry condition four is a, they were, is, is deferral? Yeah, it's yeah. deferral. It's it's a request for deferral, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. But I'm glad Stan yeah. did because okay, it's so a Stan, rare it's okay. a rare thing that they ask for deferral. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, that. they're asking yeah. for for deferral or alternately their usual condition one. So yeah, I just wanted to know what there was something unusual about this. Yeah, we don't saying. usually see number four though as an option. Understood. It's my understanding that uh, the the clients are amenable to any. Uh, reasonable efforts to preserve the trees. In fact, they do like them, so uh, we're not going to be cutting them down. Okay, sure. We're good. Okay. Good. So I can't remember. Did I cut? Uh, it's late in the day. Did I cut you off, sir? And you were going to make some um, some more submissions. We were talking about the twelve letters of support, the one letter of concern, uh, as one of the two speakers. Uh, but I did before we hear from the two neighbors and the fact that community planning is now satisfied, and they actually want you to stick with your front facade and that's I had a note here that you work with planning to design the basement walkout so that's what you did in six months um so are you done or can we go to the neighbors or is there anything you'd like to add you'll obviously have a chance to respond to what the neighbors have to say oh uh, sure if I could just add a couple of things here uh this yep. the proposed plan is definitely in line with the neighbor uh neighborhood I'm happy to see that planning is uh is agreeable to our proposal five of the seven houses uh, on that row are already much like the proposed house. So by removing the existing covered porch and adding the this two side entrances, one to the ground floor and one to the basement, it'll be much more in keeping with the facades of the street. Um, marginal increase in the uh, ground floor area, which by the way, we originally, originally came by with a 0 0.089 request. We've downsized that to 0 0.74. Uh, which is just slightly over the 0.60. Uh, so, yeah, working with uh, planning to to address these concerns, um, we've also ensured that the uh, soft landscaping is being applied in the front. Um, and as we said, taken steps to ensure that the pedestrian entry to the secondary suite is as good as possible and planning seems to be in support. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so anyone have any questions? Uh... Mr. Wallace, before we hear from the two neighbors. Can I, I just want to come back if I can for a minute. Um, I'm just looking at your plans again. I, I guess this is why I had the note. I'm sorry, I should have looked first and then asked. Yes. Um, you're indicating your basement rear addition coming in two feet, but the ground floor is in line with the existing zero clearance. So yes. are, you, are you proposing a, a cantilever there? That's exactly what it is. Thank you for noting that, yes. There is a cantilever, a, a mild angle to provide for improved access uh, between the houses there. And that's also approximately where the neighbor to the north has a chimney that uh, enters the right of way. So it provides a little extra room around that uh, chimney on the 178 6th Street. Well, I'm not sure how it does that if you're going to be at zero lot. Okay. At the, yeah, well, it's a little hard to explain, but uh, at the ground level, there's a bit of a flare out for the for the chimney and it's, I mean, if I had a photo, I'd be able to show you, but yeah, there's a slight cantilever from the ground floor up. I got it. I'm trying to, I was, I was trying to pick that up on one of your elevations and I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring that out, but that's okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, in that case, anyone have any further comments or uh, questions for Mr. Wallace? And otherwise, we'll hear from the neighbor at 177 directly across the, or across the street, Irene Hal Halford. 
Mr. Chair and members. Irene wants to be on uh, video, so I'm going to go ahead and make them a panelist now. Irene, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, and you can uh, turn on your camera if you'd like at this time. Okay. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for um, taking you. this. Good afternoon, everyone. I, I am the neighbor at 1776th Street, along with my husband, Ian Halford. And um, I just have concerns about the total um, height of the building because it's going to take away the sun from um, across the street, as well as the, the, the zero meters clearance from the north side lot. I have um, concerns about fire safety there. If the houses are that close to, like if it's that close together, as well as um, the secondary suite, um, we don't have other um, units on the street, other houses that have that basement uh, entryway. So that is something that um, sometimes doesn't look very nice. And I'm concerned about what it's going to look like as well as parking, because I, I noticed there's only one parking spot at the back of the building. And this is probably going to be multiple units in this house. And parking is already very tight on the street. And I'm wondering if, if more people come into this unit and to this home, where are they going to park? And uh, are there is there entrance from the back or from the front of the house? I'm not sure how they're proposing this, this building is being going to be used if, if there's uh, uh, the back of the building, the three story is going to be a separate house for someone else to rent and use the back parking lot and the two front uh, entrances are for another unit that has parking on the street of which there's really no extra parking on the street right now. So those, those are my concerns. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so after your neighbor speaks, uh, Mr. Wallace on behalf of the owner will respond to your concerns. Okay, did any of the members have any questions for Ms. Halford? No, okay, so let's hear then from uh, the neighbor next door, 178, Anna Tazarowitz. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, hello there. Uh, Olga for Anna Kosarewicz. I'm the daughter of Anna Kosarewicz at 1786 Street in Toronto. Okay, and we have your letter. We'll put your letter up on the board while you're speaking. We do Thank have you. your letter of concern. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Um, we've got, we've done our thorough review of the application and we've got, um, as illustrated in the letter from January 19th, we've got three key points that we wanted to uh, raise today. Um, they relate to two of the variances raised by the applicant. Uh, the first one relates to the floor space index. Um, as indicated, the drawings submitted are still dated April 22nd, though they were submitted in November, uh, in November 22nd, uh, but they're raised in April. Uh, the top floor as presented in particular, um, it shows an attic space uh, next to the, it's adjacent to the living space, which is exactly the same height. And we want to raise this uh, because currently the FSI uh, without the attic space is 0.74, which is in the app current application. However, if we review that, if we add that attic space, which is, is not dimensioned in the drawings, if we add that, it raises the FSI with the attic space to 0.84. Uh, which is estimated 10% differential. So we wanted to point that out, um, that it's likely that um, this attic space will potentially be turned into uh, a living space later on. Uh, our second point is on the encroachment, which deals with the 0% setback um, on the north side. Um, this is uh, the house, is, the 178 house is, is the one that's to the north of it. It is the most impacted by this proposal. Uh, the project, um, the project as it is, there is an existing instrument, there is a right of way, but it's not along the entire length of the property. Uh, and there is an encroachment that's been documented in the survey. Um, so by the current, uh, the application as it stands currently, they, there is a proposal to move back the basement, however, not the ground floors and up. Um, and there is a, it pros, a propose, um, as the neighbor from 177 raised, it does introduce a potential fire. Um, hazard, and we, we do understand that there's a sub, um, subsequent review of this in terms of fire safety. Uh, however, for us directly related, um, going to the north, uh, we question 
with the uh, world events and pipes and any other equipment that has been left off the drawings, where are they going to go? If, uh, if the neighbor is proposing to build a house straight up right on the lot line, uh, where are all the vents and, and other um, existing infrastructure that need to be connected? Um, it's likely that they will be encroaching on the on the neighbor's property. Also, the the height of the uh, um, um, the it, overall the 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 impact on the existing foundations. Uh, based on when we uh, raised our house, we wanted to raise the house. However, the foundations were deemed unsafe, and we had to tear down the old house that was at one seven eight six Street. What the neighbors are proposing is building on existing foundations, and there's a question in terms of the age of the foundations. We we think it's closer to 100 years old, and that uh, a substantial risk in terms of are they able to um, take the load and how um, pretty much how what condition they're in, and that can be financial implications to our to our neighbors. Therefore, we wanted to uh, flag that as how well can the neighbor demonstrate pretty much being able to put additional two floor two stories on on that side of the um of the of the lot uh there are additional variances in terms of we believe um in terms of the roof type um if it's at a certain angle but they have been left off the uh, and as well as the total height um of the building we believe um there is uh, this potential to um inquire about those as they're presented uh, the third point is is uh, it's the notable absence of water and stone belt collection system on the north side. Uh, as it currently straights, there's a straight wall, um, and it uh, pretty much without there being a uh, collection system, it introduces additional rain uh, rainfall. Uh, we just went through the uh, estimate of you know how much water is there falling in this area, uh, and we figured it was approximately over 22 meters of of rainfall and stone melt that we're likely going to see. That's almost a that's almost the average swimming pool. And we simply would like this addressed. The uh, all these concerns um, can be addressed, we believe, by the neighbor uh, following the setback. Um, if you look at the page eight of the existing letter, the photo is from the second story balcony, uh, and it shows there is existing wall uh, on the back on the backyard side uh, that has an has an existing um, brick wall. And we believe if the neighbor follows that existing brick wall, it could it could elevate a lot of the issues that we raise in terms of safety, setback from the chimney, and uh, and we simply would like to flag this as, as a safety concern moving forward. So that's particularly the photo right there. There is an existing wall there uh, that is covered, and that we believe if the owner, if the if the applicant stays off by uh, 0.6 meter, it can elevate a lot of our safety concerns. Um, we're good neighbors. We would like to see our neighbors uh, build a lovely family home for them. Uh, we've done ours and, and we build it to code uh, for family of six. We would like our neighbor to, to be respectful and mindful and, um, and consider all these, uh, the 0.6 meter setback away from the existing property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kazarowitz. Um, anyone have any questions uh, for the speaker? Um, if not, let's, hear, let's uh, turn matter back to Mr. Wallace to respond to the two neighbors' concerns. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to address each one. Uh, there were several, um, but given the time that we have, I'm happy to mention the primary ones. Uh, regarding parking, there are two parking units in the back. I believe the first uh, concern raised was regarding parking from the neighbor across the street. There are two uh, parking spaces in the back. Um, and regarding the possibility of multiple cars and renters. Uh, this is actually going to, the, the basement unit is actually going to be an in-law suite for an aging father and mother um, who will be moving in. This is going to be a multi-generational home. Uh, my understanding from my clients is that they're both in their 80s and they do want uh, some autonomy uh, and accessibility to, you know, the mailbox and the sidewalk, et cetera. But this is not going to be a, a obnoxious multi-unit rental. Uh, having said that, down the street, there is, in fact, a three-unit uh, rental um, that uh, that has uh, multiple tenants, et cetera. So um, certainly not new for this street. Uh, regarding the encroachment, this seems to be a matter of concern from, if you read the letter of objection, from a 1925 survey, and again, some mention of it in 1962, the survey that I have access to is dated uh, February 15, 2022, and it does not show encroachment. Um, I'm not 
sure what else I can say to that point. I'm not a surveyor, uh, but this is a professionally obtained survey that my clients have obtained. Uh, certainly the neighbors might be able to obtain a survey as well, uh, if necessary. Um, all in all, it's been uh, a back and forth process with planning, uh, addressing their primary concerns. Uh, planning did not have a concern with the roof, I believe that was not uh, a problem for them. And uh, regarding the attic, if and when there is a request to to pull a building permit and, and add in the future, um, of course, that will come up. Um, we are certainly not trying to skirt any issues. It is an attic. The potential use of the building, I think, is not what's on trial here, but rather what we're asking to have approved. And so I would ask for your approval on these points. I don't know if I've addressed everything that was raised. Is there anything else that I can speak to that maybe I haven't covered yet? Let's just see if uh, any of the committee members have any questions for you. Certainly. I'm going to come back to the zero lot line again. I'm not a fan of zero lot line. I understand if it's an existing situation. Um, really don't like to see that on a new build. Um, would your client have any hardship if they were to be uh, setting back one foot at least at the back or continue the basement line all the way up? It would be a, a hardship, yes, actually. And can you explain why? I'm not the architect who is hired, so I don't know all of the details. Uh, the fact that we're able to retain the wall in the front and then build up, I believe, is a simplification of design if we extend that in the back. Um, I, other than that, I'm not I sure. I don't understand that, but that's... The, the idea being that we're retaining as many of the existing walls as possible. I think it's over 50%. So I, I'm not arguing that you should retain that wall. I think that's a good idea. I'm, my position is with regards to the addition. Being more than two feet back? No, being on zero lot line. Okay, so if I look at the, if I look at the plans correctly, um, we won't be adding any walls on the zero lot line, if that was your concern. We're merely- Yeah, you will. After, well, once you've cantilevered, you'll be back at zero lot line. Oh, I see what you mean, above ground level. Right. Okay, um, I'm not sure what else I could say to that point. Uh, perhaps going back again to to the drawings, but uh, I don't know. I think that... It's okay, it, it just, I, I just wanted to know what the rationale was that what was around that. So, um, I, and, and I share the neighbor's concern with regards to venting. I don't know how you're gonna vent the uh, kitchen exhaust and the bathroom exhaust, um, unless you're planning on burning that up. But anyway. That was my understanding. I don't know if that appears on the plans. I'm just uh, checking quickly. No, that would be beyond the detail and beyond the scope of this committee, but I, I, I just wanted to, to, to acknowledge those concerns. Understood. Thank you, sir. Okay, any other kind of questions for uh, Mr. Wallace or anyone else? Or is someone ready for a motion? No motion, but to comment, I share uh, Mr. Kamarik's concerns with the zero setback. I, I'm not a fan of even reduced setbacks. They're, they're there for a reason. And when you reduce it to zero, even if you, I sort of measure my belly and I'm able to squeeze by it about two feet, right? So anything less than two feet is might as well be zero. And in that case, you might as well be getting permission from the neighbor. And if you don't have that, then you shouldn't be entitled to a zero side yard setback. I can understand an existing situation, but to uh, continue that existing situation, I don't think we should be uh, approving that. That's just my comment. Okay. Someone ready to make a motion based on comments or despite comments? I'm prepared to make a motion and I'm not sure if uh, our members are gonna take this, but- um, We're gonna put a flagpole and see who salutes. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna move approval um, subject to the planning conditions, but um, I'm gonna move for refusal of variance too. Which means it is required to be 0.6 meter, correct? Yep. 
can you comply with the bylaw? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think it could be less than 0. 0.6, but I'm not being provided an alternative, so I'm just. Is there any other conditions with that you take into planning? You take for the front facade design, which. Yeah, and forestry condition one for the two trees in the okay. front. Okay. Okay. We have motion, seconder for that motion. Just to clarify again, what is the existing condition? What is the side? What is the side yard set, setback that is currently there? It's zero on the existing. Yeah. If I may uh, interject, I think one thing that I may that may be helpful to your decision is that um, there is current it's currently a fence located on it's that. A white fence. Line. It's a white fence, right? Yeah. The the neighbors to the north at 178 did put that fence there. It um, it's not the sturdiest, so it does sort of lean over my client's property, uh, but it is currently blocking the right of way anyway. Uh, if you look at the survey dated, um, ap uploaded April 21, 2022, um, the proposed lot, uh, lot line, sorry, the, pr the proposed wall uh, would be no more of an encroachment than the existing fence already is. So we wouldn't be changing any sort of fire access or or safety egress or anything like that. So you can't you can't squeeze in between those two buildings as it is, right? Depends depends on who you are, but I believe it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it looks it looks like it's like literally about maybe a foot, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Mr. Chair, we're in the middle of a motion, but with respect Sorry. to the planning condition, I don't know that the front facade could be achieved if variance number two is being refused. Hmm. Because hmm. it does show a zero setback. Well, so you could say you could tie it. I guess Stan could say it, tie it to the plan, save an ex, you know, like you. I think. Yeah, but the, the front facade that, doesn't yeah. change because the front facade will continue to be at zero. I'm not asking them to remove an existing wall. No, but on the second floor, the front facade is at zero, and that's proposed. Well, can you not? Um, okay, you know, yeah, I saying. get it. I get it. I get it. I can't deny the variance. And well, couldn't you still, in words, explain that you're approving it for the? Obviously, the city was concerned about the front facade, not down to the very. Yeah. They're concerned yeah. about the look and the entrance to the basement. I don't think you could throw out the baby would say, oh, okay, in that case, I can't tie but it to Toronto it. Toronto building, when they have to interpret it in order to issue a building permit. Well, Mr. Comerick in his motion will make it clear that uh, it's to tie it to that elevation, save and accept where it shows a zero lot line. In that case, it should be point. point no, six, I, I think what we have to do is, is, is accept that variance yeah. of zero, uh, but only but for a certain distance to the back. Well, whatever the current, whatever the distance of the current house is. Well, now you're splitting hairs. So you're going to say now you're not refusing variance two, but you're accepting variance two, but only partially. So I don't know how you can't show it on a plan. Well, because so, uh, I I don't want to refuse the existing house. Okay, first of all, let's see. Can we table and see if first of all maybe Mr. Comerick's motion isn't going to be accepted? Yeah. Can we at least see where we're going on this. Can we, Barb? Can we put your concern? Table it for a second to see if it's even relevant. Because it's getting late and we've got another couple of applications. So if I can just add something for consideration for Mr. Kamerik. It appears I'm trying to look at the plan I'm on here. The basement floor plan, which is uh, sheet number zero two. If you look at the opposite wall, which is on the other side of the building, it's seven point seven meters deep. And I believe that reflects the existing situation. They've got a dimension for that wall, which is an internal dimension of 6.96. So you could propose something that uh, the zero side yard is permitted for 7.7 .7 meters of depth only. Yep. So as we're discussing this, can we first of all can we do a straw poll to see if Mr. Kamarik's motion is otherwise uh unless he wants other, to withdraw his motion? Other... Okay, 
No, I'm not asking him to drop his motion. I can we just wait and see if his motion is going to be supported by the other members before we worried about the semantics. It could be relevant. It could be relevant. Consider amending it for uh, some of the information I just gave him. Okay. All I'm saying is, can we maybe some of the members of the majority of members don't have a problem with the zero lot line? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's just get to that point because it may be irrelevant, right? I've got a problem with zero lot line for new bills. Okay. okay. Has. So I'd be agreeable to any kind of a, a wording okay. along the lines suggested okay. by Mr. Palmer. If Mr. Kamarik is agreeable, I'm on board. Okay, so now that we see in this, Alderson, you're Oak also, you would be interested in seeing a way because you don't want to give a zero lot line. We've heard that seems to be the consensus. In that case, let's talk about trying to how to figure out the wording. But if it was the case that, you know, the other members said, no, 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 I don't have a problem with approving it, then that would, that would be a moot point. So now that we know it's a concern, let's work on how we deal with the still approve the front facade because that's important to the city and without with 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 not giving variance number two okay I, so now we know what we're doing okay I, I i i support mr palmer's proposal i think it makes absolute sense he's he was able to verbalize what i was going on in my head but i couldn't quite get it out and so now, so Barb, does that work for the city does that work you what stand with um so what, can i suggest that you withdraw your motion to approve variances one and two refuse variance number or one and three, three refuse variance number two you can do a new motion if it Correct. pleases you to approve the applications with planning conditions and forestry conditions and then variance number two would only be for the front 7.7 .7 meters. Correct. Um, yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Drawn and, and resubmitted, thank you. Okay, and re-second, was it seconded by anyone? Mr. Palmer, I take it? Since it was your suggestion, we'll give you the seconder. All in favor, unanimous approval. Okay, so uh, hopefully that satisfies uh, everyone. Mr. Wallace, the neighbor, and the neighbor. Okay, um, we're not extending the zero lot line more than it already exists, except for the front facade where that's a good thing. Okay, um, our next application is item number 37, 14 Ellsfield Road. Um, it's an application. It was deferred from August 18, 2022, Urban Forestry looking for condition two. It's a detached dwelling with an attached garage with seven variances. We have supporting materials from Mr. Romano. Transportation has no objection and planning is, is recommending refusal of the application in their July, January 12th memo. Welcome, Mr. Romano. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Franco Romano here, uh, 2095 on credit. Okay. Uh, I, you're the only speaker, but uh, I take it we should have a presentation in light of planning's uh, negative planning report. We're recommending yep, happy to do so. Uh, Adam, Adam or staff can bring up my uh, yep. support material, please. Perfect. So this first slide shows uh, the subject property in red. So you'll see from left to right, you got Humbervale Boulevard and then Ellsfield Road. Sites located within the first block south of Bloor Street West. And it's a couple of blocks east of uh, Royal York Road. The only uh, FSI and GFA uh, numbers that I put on this plan are committee of adjustment approvals for those two streets because I couldn't get everything else on this map. So what you will see is that there is a variety of gross floor area numbers and floor space index numbers. The largest in the immediate context is 1.02 and it's within the same block, number 32. It's actually a corner lot. What we'll see is that floor space index approvals do not mimic one another, they vary. 
and they vary in that they exceed the existing zoning permission and they uh, represent a predominantly two-story detached dwelling, some flat roof, some uh, sloped roof. In terms of lock coverage, they range up to 44% and the existing lock coverage for the existing house and garage is at 40.5%. Uh, so the two points that planning staff have a concern with, we have a different planning opinion. I look at the project as a whole, how it, how it fits within the urban fabric, both in terms of its variety and its representation in floor area and staff tend to look at the number. And if you're, high, if you're higher than the highest number, then they tend to look for revisions in order to, to not create a new high number. That's not in the planning framework. It's not what the official plan says, and there's no precedent setting nature. So precedent means that one thing follows directly and immediately from something else. And clearly when we're in front of um, committee or council, we have to justify an application. So it's my submission that what is being proposed here does fit indeed with the, with the um, urban fabric. And right next door to the south, there is a house that is at 0 0.76 with a larger uh, gross floor area, 287.77 square meters. And if we look, and there's also properties across the street that have similar numbers. So if we look at slide number two, we will see what those properties look like. Slide number two shows that the subject property today is a bungalow next to two or two and a half story dwellings. So today, the next door neighbors are over double floor space index than the subject site. That is consistent with what we see on the street and what is occurring with uh, new construction is that new construction obviously exceeds floor space index. So the proposal is for a two-story dwelling. It is a flat roof and there is a variance for height, but I'm gonna to speak to that perhaps after my five minutes is up because what I wanna show you on, my, on the site plan is that in yellow, there is the existing house and garage that is 40.5% lock coverage. The dwelling itself complies with the north side yard setback, which is larger than the existing. The south side yard setback complies, but for the garage portion. So the garage portion and the floor above is the 0 0.6 south side yard setback. Both neighbors are in support and they were in support of this application dating back to December of 2021. That's why we don't have any, uh, any objectors. We'll see there's no building length, no front yard, no rear yard, no wall height. And in fact, today, if this application were submitted today, there would be no building height variance. Because the building height permission that's in force and effect is 7.2 meters and the proposal complies. So in terms of the the mass, the scale, the density, it fits, it's compatible, respects and reinforces a prevailing physical character. There is a parking space variance and the parking space variance is an unusual one. The zone examiner has seen that the architectural drawings shows a vehicle depicted in the driveway in front of the garage. The garage is not obstructed. The fact that the drawing itself showed that uh, vehicle in the driveway is why the zone examiner identified that as a variance. Transportation has no concerns. Urban forestry has one condition of approval. I would submit that the application satisfies all four tests for our minor variance. It has broad community support, including the immediate neighbors and across the street. Subject to any questions, Mr. Chairman, that's my uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Romano. Uh... Very complete uh, presentation is uh, is this typical. So my my question is why is city planning advising uh, us in their report that it's the highest in the immediate, both immediate and broadest neighborhood context of 0.8 two times the area of the lot, and uh, in terms of the coverage, it's the the proposed lot coverage of 41.87 would be the largest approved in the immediate context. So you've given us examples that this is not. In fact, that a character. So why do they say it's that character? Well, sir, staff won't tell me where those numbers come from. You have access to the same. You do. I, 
but I do know that, uh, you know, I have, I have the committee of adjustment decision. You can get it for 32 Ells field. It's a flat roof design. I could have put it in my visuals, but I, I, again, didn't have space for it. It's a, it's at the corner. It's at 1.02 for space index. That's the largest, but there are others that are remarkably close. Mm -hmm. 0 0.76, 0 0.79, and some of the some of them don't even have floor space index numbers associated with it. Just the GFA number is presented, so I don't know what the lot area is. I mean that that's where we get into. You know, I don't I don't want to lose sight of the fact that the overall design fits in well. It's not it's not merely a numbers game and trying to match up with what is either predominant or the highest. Yeah, uh, that's the, the neighbors are. Uh... Are, are okay and you've shown us how it fits in yeah. your photo how it fits in um any other yeah. anyone else have any questions for mr yeah. romano uh mr romano did you mention that number 12 has a greater fsi right next door 16 16 uh, no 16 has 0 0.76 for space index but the floor area the gfa number is higher 287.77 square meters so it must be a slightly larger lot. Yeah, and I actually like the fact that it's a flat roof in between those two sloped roofs. I think it's a nice contrast. So, thank you. Any other questions, or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor. First of all, thanks as always to Mr. Romano for a very thorough professional presentation. Um, he certainly demonstrated to my satisfaction that what's proposed here is quite in keeping with the immediate and neighborhood context. Um, I believe that the uh, proposal meets the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition two. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that motion. Ms. Alderson, I see your hand up. All in favor? Mr. Palmer, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Of the committee. Enjoy your evening. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Um, next application, the last application on our 1 p.m. Uh, agenda, and then we have our two items on our 3 p.m. agenda. Um, Zero Titan Road, North South. Uh, this matter is deferred from the uh, December 8th. 2022 hearing, which was our last hearing, believe it or not. Um, and it's an application to uh, permit a parking depot on a portion of the hydro corridor fronting Titan Road between Islington Avenue and Goodrich Road. And the variance is the proposed parking depot is not a permitted use in a U zone. This matter was deferred uh, automatically. I think there was a issue of notice. Uh, we have the materials from the previous uh, hearing. We have planning advised that their previous refusal report stands from the last time, uh, which is a November 16th, uh, 2022 email referring back to their original refusal report. Uh, the speaker, uh, this is David Eagleman. No, it's not. It's Stephen Key. And what did I think it was? That's no but, Chair, because he's listed members. as the old agent. Okay, I'm not crazy. So David Eagleman is listed as the agent, but Stephen Key, you're uh, you're presenting, correct? That is correct. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Eagleman is uh, has a conflict, so I am uh, uh, doing the presentation for today. Okay. Go ahead, sir. So, uh, um, my name is Stephen Chi, a planner from Design Plan Services. So the owner of the subject land is uh, actually Infrastructure Ontario, and our client has received authorization from Infrastructure Ontario to proceed with committee of adjustment hearing. And our client wants to lease uh, the subject land from Infrastructure Ontario for a parking depot to support his business. Uh, the parking depot is for storing limo and taxi cars, and ma mainly limo cars, which is about 75% of the business. Infrastructure Ontario is ready to enter the lease agreement with our client subject to the approval of the minor variance application. So there is only one variance applicable to the proposal. Under the former Utopo, Utopo code zoning code, the proposed vehicle depot is not a permitted use. Before getting into the variances, I would like to know that I have reviewed the report from planning staff and respect, respectfully disagree with the conclusion of the report. As per the report from planning staff, 
their main issue with the proposal is that the proposed parking spaces are within an area designated as parks and open space as per the official plan. We have then submitted a revised site plan showing the parking area entirely outside of the area designated as parks and open space. And I would like to ask staff to pull up the land use reference plan that was submitted. So we have the site plan overlaid on top of the official plan map. As shown on the official plan mapping, it is very clear that only a portion of such a land is designated open space and rest of the land is designated utility corridor. From my understanding, the area designated parks and open space used to be a community garden and was abandoned for a long period of time. Further, we have, a, we have multiple consultations with city planning department and they have failed to identify what we could do to satisfy them or try to work with us to get them to support these, uh, this proposal. They also never provided any future plans or any directions for this land, which they don't even own. As per official plan policy 4.4.2, parking lot is identified as secondary purposes and it is permitted in hydro corridors. As such, we believe the proposal has been revised accordingly to address city planning's concern. And under section 320-126 of the former Etobicoke Zoning Code, Parking lot is a permitted use if the parking lot is associated with a public public use or in conjunction with a use permitted on abutting lands. We have confirmed with zoning examiner if the client's business is located adjacent to the subject land, the proposed parking depot will be permitted as of right. Although the client's business is not in the immediate is not immediately adjacent to the subject land, the proposed parking depot will serve an existing business in the area. Therefore, the proposed parking depot will not have any additional impact than what is already contemplated by the bylaw. I will note that the, uh, the subject land is a utility corridor surrounded by employment industrial zones where vehicle depot or parking depot is permitted if it is located not closer than 70 meter from a residential zone. The closest residential zone is approximately 300 meter away. Moreover, the subject land is currently vacant with limited vegetation consisting mostly of shrubs. The proposed use is compatible with the surrounding industrial area and will have little to no impact to the, on the surrounding area. We also had extensive consultation with city's economic development department and due to the historically low vacancy rate for industrial properties in the city, which is under 1% at the moment, the economic development officer weren't able to steer the client to the right direction to any suitable properties based on the local market condition. This is the most viable option for the client to operate his business. And further, the client is only le leasing the subject land from Infrastructure Ontario. And typically, the lease agreement will include a boilerplate condition noting that should a city needed it or needed, needed the land for any public use, the site will be vacated in a short period of time for that use. If the committee sees appropriate, the client is amenable to add a 10 year time limit to the approval of the variance. And based on the provided uh, justification, I'm of the opinion that the proposal represents uh, good planning and meets the full test. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen, for that, that presentation. So I'm looking at the plans here and it shows the hydro corridor and it shows a bunch of parking spaces. So is it gonna have to be paved? Or is yes, it currently it, paved? It, it will have to be paved. Okay, so currently though, it's just like, it's not like nice, uh, you know, green space, it's, it's shrubbery and... It's a shrubbery, yeah, there's nothing on it right now. There's nothing on it. And uh, so I guess that's where the pole, they have to park in between the towers, I guess, the uh, hydro lines. That is correct. They park underneath. So there's no other really use for that, the other than saying, well, it's, it's providing green space. Uh, um, and, and you're agreeable to it, even though they're going to have to, someone's going to have to spend money, uh, you know, paving is not cheap. Asphalt's really expensive uh, that they're prepared to do, agree to a 10 year time limit. That That is correct because that's the current market condition. They can't yeah. find anywhere else. And, and the landowner is the province. The province. Exactly. Infrastructure Ontario. Okay. And there's, and like you say, there's nowhere else. They can't just readily go and it's not like you're taking away, uh, you know, opportunity for private landowners to rent out this land. There is just isn't any. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Let's see if anyone uh, else has any questions for you. 
Just, just one question. Uh, where, where is your client located? So my client is located, um, uh, it's 117 Judge Road. It is about 750 meter north. Okay. 750 meter north, yeah. Okay, fair enough. And, and this is for, again, limousine. It's not, it's it for, you know, I've known some other areas near the Finch Corridor where they have, you know, new cars that are just brought in from the country, they yeah. store them. This is for active limousines that are going in and out or new limousines yeah. until they get put on the, like, I don't understand how, how many spots are we talking about? You can, looks like quite I'm a number in the plan. So I think the business for the owner is they store uh, limousines and taxi cars, and they also do repairs for those cars. Not on site. Not, but, not, but not on this site, yes, no. uh, in, in their shop at uh, 117 Judge Road. Okay, but there's going to be, you know, in and out. I'm not sure if that's a concern, but it's not like you're storing uh, cars that just arrive on, on ship until they're processed or something. It's, it's actionable for taxis and limousines that are, on the road. I don't know why if they're on the or shouldn't they be on the road making money, not sitting in a parking lot to, to say a room for like hundreds of cars. I'm I'm not That's too sure how it stand. Yeah, I'm not too sure how it works, but uh, this is uh, apparently a demand right now. Uh, they need space for uh, storing. Yeah, I assume they'll have some security. There's going to be security there. Uh, I'm I'm I think there will be. Okay. Okay. Anyway, does anyone else have any questions about this? I'm just you know we have to looking at the cities. What the city's objection is and what the uh whether that's reasonable or not so just having an idea a better handle on what it is the issue is whether is the city's reasoning uh uh makes good planning sense or not well no one's going to go recreate in a park in the middle of an industrial yeah it's zone. like yeah you know right okay, can so you can have a debate whether they should uh the municipal golf course in the city given the absence of amenity space and condos, whether some of those golf courses should be cut down or eliminated to, for the public good. But it's not like people are gonna go recreate on family day in the hydro corridor, right? Yeah, it, like in the hydro corridor in the middle of an industrial zone. Exactly. Um, so I, I, I don't have any problems with that. I'm assuming you're gonna to have to get some curb cut permissions from the city and that kind of thing anyway. Yeah, um, that's correct, yes. yes. The, the only possible future use that could be of public benefit would be to go back to a community garden. But again, that's even not ideal for that. And with the 10 year limit, um, I think we more than cover that. So I'm willing to move a motion uh, to approve uh, with the 10 year time limit. Okay, thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. Taylor, all in favor? Laura? Proposed. Okay, the motion carries four to one with Laura Alderson dissenting. Uh, you have your approval. Thank you, Mr. Key. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Okay. Um, okay, that concludes our. And our that one was for talk. ten years, a ten-year term, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so that concludes our one one p.m. hearing. Uh, we now have a three p.m. hearing. Um, can we dispense with the reading of the? Uh, Opening remarks, which are, uh, you know, I don't we think do we, have uh, people. Do you think... These are new applications, and I think there's someone okay registered. Yeah, these are not them. these are not deferrals like the last couple have been. And I see Peter Giordano is one of the agents. The other one is a homeowner. So I guess uh, makes sense that we read it out. So I will do so. I'll pretend I'm an auctioneer and read fast. I always wanted to do that, but I won't go that fast. Okay, uh, so we have two more hearings at the three o'clock agenda, and we're just going to do the opening remarks quickly. Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. We also ask that you mute your devices until you're called on to speak. 
Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. And at all other times, your video will be disabled and you'll be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use the share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We'll acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, and the Haudenosaunee and Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 43, 45, and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and TLAB will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto local appeal body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies, as those terms are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. We go in order, the two items before us. When an application is uncontested, the applicant or agent may proceed with a presentation if they desire. When the committee does not require presentation, they should advise the chair if they wish to address the committee. The committee may ask questions and take the matter into the committee for decision. Each speaker will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. When addressing committee, please start off by stating your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first, makes their presentation. Please note the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals made at the hearing today, and may decide to refer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentation. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent is given an opportunity to rebut those issues and answer those questions raised by the neighbors. That will mark the end of the discussion and the application is then taken in the committee for a decision. Okay, so we have two applications. The first one is item number 39, uh, 88 Meadowville Drive. And uh, that is for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. We have a revised agenda. Um, and. Um, We have, uh, yeah, we have a revised agenda. There were 13 variances. There are now seven. Four of those have been reduced, so quite substantial changes. Urban forestry is looking for a refusal. We have an arborist report. Planning has two conditions of approval. Um, TRCA, yeah, TRC, I raised this at the beginning, is requesting a deferral until the development limits of the lot can be established. Um, and the speaker for this application is, I believe, the homeowner. Yes, Carl Calandra, the homeowner, as well as uh, the neighbor at 93 Meadowville Drive. Mr. She's Chair. either next door or one house over. Mr. Yes. Chair, members, uh, we had a late change, and the uh, agent is on the line for the um, file, uh, Ricky Papa. Okay. So we have an agent and not an owner, that's fine. Um, okay, and we still have the neighbor on the line as well. So let's hear from the uh, agent. You said it's Ricky. 
Yes, Mr. Chair, Ricky, R-I-K-K-I. And uh, as another note, the area resident is not present on the call. We did reach out to them and they confirmed they did not want to speak anymore. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Okay, yes. Uh, my name is Matt Papa. I'm the architect and uh, owner's agent. The office uh, address is 174 Spadina Avenue. Okay, now you'll have to address in your comments as to why we should proceed uh, given TRC's deferral request, whether that can be certainly uh, dealt with after the fact uh, or whether we have to defer today and wait until the development limits of the lot are established or whether you have any further information. That was a memo dated, I think, January the 19th, so not too long ago. Sure, I, I'll address that uh, in my presentation. Yeah. yeah, and we do have, I think, also letters of support five. So. That's correct. Please go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair, the subject proposal is for a two-story single-family dwelling with an integral garage on an irregular-shaped lot. The proposed building front faces north. There are neighbors to the north, south, and west of the property, and no immediate neighbors to the east, which faces the ravine. The massing is two stories with the exception of the rear east portion, where there is a single story massing approximately half of the rear elevation. This single story portion alone is accountable for the variances of building length, depth and rear setback. It is worth noting that the floor area of the proposal is well under the area allowed both in coverage and FSI. Approximately 586 square meters of floor space is allowed as per the bylaw, and this proposal is approximately 1200 square feet less than that. As such, we are not proposing variances for area or coverage, and this is by no means an overbuild given the lot size and bylaw. The proposal is subject to RNFP, Forestry, and TRCA. We have obtained support from planning, RNFP, and since filing of their letter, an agreement with the TRCA in concept. Through correspondence, the TRCA has required that the interior habitable portions of the home be west of the floodplain, and the floodplain is 114.8 MASL. This requirement, as well as the irregular shape of the property, have significantly impacted the proposed footprint and massing. The floodplain cuts through a significant portion of the lot, approximately 500 square meters east of the lot. As such, the orientation of the plans has had a bias towards the north and south and resulted in a reduction of those setbacks. The set of TRCA imposed requirements are the primary reason for the variances sought today. The variances proposed are for height, building length, and depth, east side platform area, exterior stair width and front and rear yard setbacks. Note that we have made significant revisions to the plans and variances from our original submission to ensure the support of planning, adjacent neighbors and the TRCA. Uh, regarding the variance for height, the TRCA requires a raised basement above the floodplain resulting in a higher elevation for the floors above. In addition, the heavy sloping down to the east creates a lower established grade than the lots to the west. The floodplain restrictions of the property result in a building being situated on the west portion of the lot where the grade is highest. The elevation difference between the established grade and the main level is higher due to this condition, resulting in the height variances. Regarding the variance for rear yard, rear yard setback, front uh, setback and length and depth, as mentioned, the floor plate biases towards the rear due to the TRCA restrictions. Although the minimum setback proposed is seven meters, the massing in this area is only a single story. The remainder of the massing behind or north is 12.9 meters minimum for the rear property line, well above the minimum bylaw of 9.59 meters. The average rear yard setback is approximately 12.3 meters, well above the 9.59 minimum bylaw. I would argue that the average rear yard setback is more important than the minimum rear yard setback in this proposal. To ensure the west neighbor was less impacted and fit contextually, the two-story rear main wall at the west is aligned with the neighbor's property's rear main wall at 15.4 meters rear yard setback. I note that the rear neighboring property 6 Van Allen at its common property line has a setback of approximately 3 meters and that planning as well as adjacent neighbors support the current rear yard setback variances and configuration. Work correspondence all immediate neighbors have supported uh, have supported the proposal including 6 Van Allen Court the neighbor directly south 90 Meadowvale Drive the neighbor directly north 91 Meadowvale Drive, the neighbor directly west, and 94 Meadowvale Drive. In addition to support letters, the agent or owner, or owner discussed the project with, with 12 neighbors in total along Meadowvale Drive and Van Allen Court. In regards to the department, 
departmental correspondence. We have been in correspondence with the TRCA since early November and have made significant revisions to the pro proposal via several rounds of comments. The TRCA has requested, unfortunately, an hour before the submission deadline, an additional change. We have had further conversations with the TRCA since and have agreed to a minor change to address their comments. The change does not impact the variances sought today. Despite the standing letter, TRC has expressed support and concept, which can be fulfilled during subsequent required TRCA submissions prior to permitting. Again, the TRCA request does not require any change to the variances. Ravines has no objection to the variances sought. Planning is in support of the proposal, and the letter references the changes made since the initial submission. The scope of the project, as well as the list of variances, has been significantly reduced through correspondence. Through revision, the proposal has gained the support of immediate neighbors. Despite its standing letter, the TRC has indicated support for the proposal with minor revision that does not impact the variances sought today. Yeah. Okay, supported by up, community sir. planning, ravines. Yeah. Ricky, and, can you wrap up, yeah. please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, by community planning and ravines who are aware of the TRCA's request to have no issues with the changes required. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, Ricky, basically, the, the bottom line is, as we know, your client's going to have to get a TRCA permit, even on ones where they, they write a letter of approval. They say, please exactly. note that a, a permit is required before you can pull a building permit. So, That's same correct. thing here. You obviously told us, your professional planner, that they're on side, they're working with you. Everyone else is working with you. Planning's on side. So, I don't have personally any uh, qualms about uh, proceeding with this matter and, and granting an approval given that PRCA said oh hold on we have to determine the uh, development limits if there is some ish main issue they're not giving you a permit you're not starting to build anyway exactly. you have to come back. that's so correct you made a presentation but I think that's the bottom line of of where, where we are on on this uh, with regards so to the TRC that's correct. Right. and chicken and egg if you get your approval here I don't think the members have to lie awake at night worrying <laughs> that you're going to somehow circumvent TRCA. They have to sign off before you can pull a building permit. Correct. Members, any uh, questions uh, or comments for Ricky? Mr. Palmer? Yeah. Um, do you have any issues with the planning conditions? By it to elevations? Um, I, I, we would prefer, obviously, the flexibility. Of, of not having those conditions imposed. However, I've had many conversations with uh, the planner, uh, Daniel, um, and I think we are okay with uh, those conditions being imposed. Okay, that's good, thank yeah, you. The first one is obviously the bird friendly and light uh, dark sky compliant, but the second part, the issue is, you know, if any of those things change as a result of dealing with TRCA, then you probably have to, you probably have to come back, right? It is preferred, and I, we did express this. It's it's tough um, yeah. uh, for them to understand that permitting. It's difficult to make changes given those um, those requests by planning. Um, obviously, we prefer not to have them. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to read and see the lines as why they're asking for that, or what their concern or uh, the risk. Uh, anyway, uh, someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Just Chair. A quick question. Uh, forestry is recommending refusal. Can you just comment on what you, where, where you at with them in terms of negotiations? Yes, I can. So those two trees referenced in their, um, in their report, um, there are, sorry, there are about um, close to 100 trees on this lot. So um, yeah. bear with me on that. <laughs> On the uh, the trees number, but I th I think there's there are trees referenced uh, one one two and one 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 so one eleven and one twelve. Uh, those two trees are um, in the way of the proposed driveway. Um, however, the uh, canopy and root system for those trees, as outlined by the arborist report, uh, the tree protection plan, are well outside the proposed foundations of the property. So I'm not sure. Um, what they're, uh, what they're, uh, why they're requesting that uh, that variance be adjusted given that. Um, however, we will be uh, the one in two conditions for forestry to apply here, and we will have to go through uh, the permitting process for those trees. Yeah, I think their alternative is one and two anyway, so that's that's fine. 
You don't have any shortage of trees there. So, so okay, is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Chair and members, I just, earlier I may mention that uh, Alexander David Hoyle, after speaking with him, didn't want to speak, but he is on the call. So uh, I would feel more comfortable if we do uh, let him just say hey for a second and confirm that he doesn't want to. Sure. Yeah, perfect. Sure. And I was, I was wondering whether he was next door, but I believe he said there is a 91 uh, who consented. So you're one house over, correct, Mr. Hoyle? David, Mr. you're Hoyle? On, David, you're unmuted. So if you'd like to say something, your, your opportunity. Oh, is okay. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was a little confusion that uh, I, I guess the, the plans I had reviewed were actually the ones from December. So there have been changes made, which reduces the overall uh, impact to the site. Uh, so I was pleased that uh, I talked to the neighbor who's adjacent to them, uh, and they they were they were okay with it. So I thought if if they're okay with it, the the uh, slight concern that there's there's a lot of windows on the uh, on the west side, which face which is right adjacent to the property line. I guess is that I didn't think there was uh, they and it faces into the house next door, so I wasn't sure if that that was allowed on the on the west side, and I guess it was just the overall impact to the uh, the creek and the uh, area around it on the TRCA that uh, there's quite a lot of uh, traffic that goes in there uh, just to foot traffic, and uh, uh, this is going to be quite quite an impact when you take down most of those trees on the east side. So it, it's, uh, it, if the adjacent neighbors seem to be okay with things, I, I can kind of go with it. I just sort of thought it, it was a lot of house to go onto that site, uh, especially if it's next to the creek, which is really untouchable land. So um, that, that, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Papa, do you want to respond to that at all or? Yeah, sure, I can respond. So, so uh, the first um, concern I think was the windows on the, uh, the west elevation. Um, new, help, new homes are, um, uh, are allowed to have windows if they're 1.2 meters away from the property line as is the case here. Um, there is a percentage of windows that will be allowed and that, that will be uh, addressed at permitting, of course. Um, uh, I believe we are under that percentage, but that will be uh, verified by the city at permitting. The second um, would be access for construction. And I think um, the minimum dimension on the ravine side uh, from the property line is about 5.75 meters, um, which is a lot and uh, would definitely allow any uh, machinery or bins to uh, enter the site. And once you enter that site, it's pretty wide open. There's a lot of space on that side uh, for, for uh, any storage or any uh, type of machinery that has to be on site to, during the process. So I would, um, I would say that, it, that you know, there's no intent to uh, obstruct any of the public pathways or, or driveways uh, uh, on the streets. Uh, and there's, um, there's ample room for, for the construction equipment. Okay, I've just been using the time while you're speaking to look at the plans for the house. Very nice, uh, nice large house. Um, okay, anyone else have any questions or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll make a motion with regard to revised agenda page dated January 12th, 2023. I find the variances requested uh, meet the four tests under the Planning Act. I'm satisfied with, uh, you know, as we discussed about the TRCA, uh, they they sort of control, uh, uh, you know, the the, the building uh, process, so we don't have to uh, concern ourselves with that. That's protected. Um, so I move approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two and the conditions requested by community planning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. I have a uh, seconder for that motion. Ms. Alderson, thank you all in favor. We have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Papa. Thank you, Mr. Hoyle. 
Okay, on to our last uh, application of the afternoon. Item number 40, 18 Blair Athol Crescent. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. A previous committee of adjustment uh, decision uh, approved variances relating to floor space index, front yard setbacks, side yard setbacks, dwelling height, main wall height, and soffit height. And now there's another three variances uh, being requested uh, for uh, floor space index. Uh, coverage and uh, the uh, west side lot line and east side east side lot line. So we'll hear more about that. The uh, agent for the applicant is uh, Peter Giordano. I believe we have a neighbor at 16 right next door, Enrico Asta registered to speak. Welcome, Mr. Giordano. Welcome back. Hi, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Okay, so we have the supporting material. We have the previous decision from June 5th, 25th, 2020. And um, why do you give us a bit of a presentation on this? Absolutely. What happened here? They got approval. Why are they back? <clears throat> so it's, it's pretty simple. I'll explain that. If, if you yep. can, um, I have a, sl I have a uh, presentation, but I really only need two of the slides. So if I could start with slide number three. And I'll just start into it. Um, so yeah, we, we did attend on June the 25th of 2020. Um, we received approval on the variance items. Um, the original design included an uncovered porch at the rear of the house. The original direction, we are the designers for the property. So the original direction was given to us by our clients. They wanted to keep the porch uncovered to maximize the amount of natural light flowing into the, the dining room, the kitchen and the family room, which are all on the rear wall of that house. Um, you can see the before and after on the screen here. So during construction, um, there was a discussion between the, uh, the, the husband and wife regarding whether or not uh, a flat roof should have been designed for the covered porch. Um, once the windows were in place and they were able to experience the space better, um, uh, a flat roof was mocked up to see the impact of light into the rear rooms that they were con concerned weren't getting enough light. They mocked up the flat roof. Um, it's got four columns that support it, but it is an open uh, flat roof. Uh, it's the same extent of the covered porch, so no change to the covered porch that was previously approved. Um, except um, they did call us to notify us that this change was being made. Uh, we notified them that this would then uh, flip the switch on requiring a new variance. They paused the project. Um, they've, they applied, they, they asked us to apply for a, a formal permit revision and that includes this hearing. So we're just awaiting the outcome of this hearing. Okay, so, um, so, we're, so it's pretty simple. They decide to cover the porch. The uh, FSI technic went up by 2.02, .02, even though it looks like it's going from 0.45, you got 0.54 at committee the first time? Correct. So again, 0.54 to 0.56, I still say they should have an extra line in when they these applications so the neighbors don't have heart attacks thinking someone's coming back for another big whack over what they recall they got two years ago and remind them that they actually are only, they did get most of the way there. Um, anyway, I guess if they call or they show up, they, they quickly find that out. So, um, okay, thanks for that explanation. Committee members, uh, any other questions as to uh, why Mr. Uh, Giordano is back here on behalf of his client? Uh, we do have a neighbor to hear from. So does anyone have any questions for Mr. Giordano at this time? If not, we'll hear from the neighbor next door. Okay, so we have Enrico Asta on the, uh, the line uh, with concerns or comments or support, we don't know. Everyone, Mr. Asta? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, good afternoon. For, thanks for this opportunity. Mike, uh, I just have some clarifying questions at this point. Um, I, I don't understand the wording of the application. It says here to construct a new detached dwelling why why the building's already there so what what does, is this just a procedural kind of thing yeah i guess semantics just like i'm mentioning that 
you got this in the mail, if you thought, oh, whatever is built there now, he's going up another, uh, you know, uh, 60 square meters. No, he's already at 0.52, right. sorry, 5.4, he's going to 5.6. It's a slight, slight increase and it's occasioned just as a result of adding on, I guess, this, as we've just heard from Mr. Giord uh, Mr. Giordano, what the reason is for uh, right. them being back here. Yeah, so that that was one concern that maybe they were thinking of putting in another unit in the back as the city of Toronto has already agreed to allow. So I just uh, wanted to clarify that for sure. What does a mocked up, uh, I think uh, Mr. Giordano referred to the roof as a mocked up structure. What's that mean? I'll, uh, he can explain, but I think what he means is like when you want to, they put up a piece of cardboard or something just to make, see what it would feel like if it had a covered roof to right. see on the impact of the light. So it's like a mock-up design, like a- That's what I thought, but the, the structure's built. He can, let, hey, he can respond, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. That's what I think he meant. Uh, I guess they, before they actually put it up, they- Yeah, uh, that's what I would, uh, that's my interpretation as well, yeah. but the structure's already built. So I'm just wanna- Oh, it is, okay. Yes, yes, at least uh, I don't think it's a mock-up, it's built. Okay, so so I guess maybe before they built it, they put a, you know, a piece of- Yeah, uh, uh, but Mr. Giordano uh, referred to Mr. it Giordano, as a mock-up. Or should I like, you know, to, to let us know that it's already been, it's a fait accompli, that the changes he's just talked about they wanna make, that it's already done, it's as built. So thanks for at least letting us know that. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So, a couple more questions. Else? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there? I. I. You know. I'm not uh, an architect. Uh, I don't understand these drawings very well. I just want to make sure it's just related to the porch. That there's the variances are only about the porch and nothing else. Okay. We'll let Mr. Giordano answer that one. I, I kind of jumped in on the mock-up and answer, but he'll, he can answer that. Any other, so you're concerned. Okay, let me that. go with the other yeah. one. I just want to confirm there's no basement underneath the porch. Again, he can confirm that. Okay. And uh, that, that's you've it. Checked the plans, but you want, yeah. I assume you're like me, you're a layman, you don't quite understand the plans yeah, as well. Uh, pretty and much. So you want some comfort from him that there is no basement under the porch and there is nothing else going on untoward to get these yeah, little and, you know, I just want to point out that the structure's built already, so it's not yeah. just a mock-up, okay? <laughs> yeah, perhaps we can change that to as built. Right. For clarity. And, uh, okay, so, um, so uh, let's uh, let have, let's Mr. have Mr. Uh, Giordano answer your uh, those questions for you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, yes, uh, there is there is space underneath the porch, so it went from being unexcavated to an excavated a, a space under the porch, but it's it's purely uh, access, it's storage for uh, lawn furniture, for rear patio furniture from the outside. So it, it's unfinished storage as it currently exists. And the mock-up, um, the homeowner is a builder and what he did is, you know, he has access to wood and material. He propped up the posts, the posts were just a, series of two by sixes, he propped up the, he went ahead and built the the platform to experience it, put plywood on top of it. It, it was in its rough state um, so that they could fully experience it. Uh, yes, the variances, so the variances for coverage are affected by once the, once that same covered porch, even though the extent of the covered porch is the same, once you put the roof on top of it, it goes from being um, just a flat porch, less than 1.2 meters above grade to being included in coverage. So the increase in coverage was for the porch, but there is the left rear corner of the house did also get squared off. So there's a small portion of the rear corner of the house that got squared off. If maybe I could ask you to go to slide number four, please, that would explain it a little bit better. Um, so, and there's a before and after. So the, the before condition is in the lower left corner of the diagram. You can see there's a little notch taken out of the rear of the property. That notch was filled. It's the blue box that I have on the site plan. That box got filled, which increased FSI, that equivalent of that area on the ground floor on the second floor got added into FSI. 
So there is that area. And then all of the other, the other two variances are all about the porch. Uh, the side yard setbacks are what they call setback beyond. So you're allowed to build, um, you're allowed to have a building that's 17 meters long. Once you go beyond 17 meters, you can build uh, a projection beyond that, but it has to have uh, side yard setbacks of 7.5 meters. Um, so you could see that I've identified on this plan, item number two highlighted on both sides, um, those variances spell out, it, it's both the two variances, it spells out those two side yard variances. It doesn't reduce the existing building. Um, yeah, I never intended to suggest it, it wasn't currently built. That's what I had applied uh, when I was suggesting it was, um, you know, that they had built it as part of the mock-up to, uh, to look at it. Uh, there's, they're in the process, it's paused, so they're in the process of uh, waiting for this decision. Uh, they would finish cladding the posts and trimming the, the canopy and finishing it off uh, once we get a building permit, a revised building permit for it. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Giordano, for your rebuttal and answering Mr. Ass's questions, which are very good questions. Um, and reasonable. I still think that the notice should have shown that uh, you're going from 0.54 to 5.6 and not from 0.45, but that's, I guess, not what they do. Um, okay, members, any further questions or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm satisfied that the variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval without conditions. Thank you, sir. Seconder for that. Mr. Kamarik, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Giordano. Thank you, Mr. Asta. And uh, now can I have a motion to, to adjourn? And we just made it under 6 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Laura Alderson seconded by Mr. Palmer. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. We'll see some of you next time. When is the next hearing, by the way? February 9th. February, February 9th. So we have the 9th and the 23rd. Yeah. Okay, every two weeks. Okay. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Glad we could finish before 6 p.m. Good night. Thank you, members. Good work, Good work today, guys. Bye. Thanks very Bye, much, everyone. everyone. Good night. Thanks to the, our wonderful staff. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.